Today is the day. Today, dreams become reality. Today is the MLS Super Draft 2021 presented by Adidas. There are five generation Adidas signings. We will see them as they are drafted. In wake, Andrew Pannenberg, Calvin Harris. There is your potential number one overall pick, Philip Mayaka, out of Clemson and Danny Pereira, hoping to be drafted high out of Virginia Tech to see where he goes. And two twins, an incredible story. You've got Matt in the blue jacket and Ben DeRosa, left and right back. Awesome stuff and welcome. To the ANT and MLS Virtual Studios, I am Andrew Weeby with my partners in soccer, Matt Doyle and Charlie Davies. And guys, as much as I wish I was in a ballroom somewhere, as much as I wish <laughs> I was with you guys, that does not dampen my enthusiasm for this day. It is a special day, the MLS Super Draft. It is a day when dreams are made. I cannot wait to see what happens, what trades are made, and what uh, players go to which clubs. Doyle, how you feeling? I, I love the Super Draft just like you, Weeby, and in part because of the dream stuff, but for me, it's a, all about GMs and sporting directors pulling back the curtain a little bit and giving us a peek at what they think of their rosters and where they can upgrade. I love that aspect of it. And for me, it's, it's the culmination of all the hard work these young players put in since they created that dream to become a professional soccer player. So it's a special moment, not only for the players, but for their families, the sacrifices they've made, their friends, their coaches, their teammates, and their supporters. So I'm pumped. This is but the first step, and here are your rules on this day. There are three rounds. We will be with you for the first round. 81 selections in those three rounds. 86th overall because five teams have additional selections via trades, compensation picks. Three minutes on the clock for each team. you got to have your pick in at the end, but if you're trying to make a trade, you need a little bit more time to think each team is permitted one three-minute time out. We have 27 picks in the first round. There is already big moves happening out there, Doyle. Colorado Rapids trading up from sixth to the third spot. Houston Dynamo got the sixth pick and 200000 in GAM. Houston also went and got Derek Jones, and we just saw come through. The Portland Timbers trade away the eighth pick to Orlando for 100000 in GAM. What do you make of these moves so far? Well, when, when teams are given that much allocation money to move into the top 10 and Colorado moving into the top three with their second trade into the top 10, like that tells you they have a guy who they know they want to get right there. They're not just looking for someone, the best talent on the board. They have a specific purpose with those trades. We'll see how they use those picks. There are five teams with two picks overall. Austin have two. Colorado have two. Orlando now have two. Vancouver and Miami as well. Charlie, what do you make of Inter-Miami? What should they be looking for here? Well, they're looking for defensive reinforcements. They lost their goalkeeper and Luis Robles. Their center backs uh, had quite a quite a shift and a change. So I think they're going to be looking to build a foundation. And you see Austin with their second pick at 11. And the entire goal is to win MLS Cup. Columbus Crew SC happy to be 27. There are your 27 <laughs> picks in the first round. We will bring all of them to you live. Devin Crow will have interviews with front office folks, coaches, and the players themselves. It's going to be a big day. But let's put it in perspective, Doyle. What is actually available? What are the strengths of the pool? How, much, how many MLS-ready players, excuse me, do you see out there? Well, it's always a crapshoot because it is about fit and opportunity, and it's, that's not distributed equally. But every year we see players come into the league via the Super Draft and make a huge impact. We saw it last year with Daryl Pique and Henry Kessler. But for the most part, you just want to have guys who you could coach up over a year or two and turn them into contributors, like what we saw with Chris Mueller and Tristan Blackman from 2018. They're both in national team camp now. So there is talent in here. You just have to be willing to develop it. This is the U.S. national team side, the U23s and the full national team, Charlie. We see this laundry list of names. We also know Canada is uh, having their national team stocked. I know you love Buchanan. He made a huge impact last year in the playoffs. Uh, Tejan Buchanan has made a considerable impact for the revolution, first at, as an attacking right winger and then as a right back in the playoffs. You saw Dane St. Clair, what he was able to do in the goal for Minnesota. But Richie Larea, look at the growth from 2016 to now, full-blown international for Canada and one of the, the stars in MLS at his position. We're shining lights on some of these national team folks. But remember, Julian Gressel came in as a signed senior. You also had a Jack Harrison, who's in the EPL now with Leeds United, come in as the first overall pick. Here are the generation Adidas players, just like Harrison was, oh, a couple years ago. They have Ethan Bartlow and Brett Halsey. Those are late additions to this class. But, Charlie, give us some insight on Calvin Harris, Philip Mayaka, and Danny Pereira. Those are guys that uh, were the initial class, and you watched them a ton in the ACC this year. Well, Calvin Harris is as dynamic as they come. A winger, kind of in the Theo Walcott mold. 
is dynamic, makes great runs, a good finisher. And then Mayaka and Pereira, both stalwarts. They're studs. Midfielders, Pereira, you get a little bit more of an attacking presence, whereas Mayaka is more of a defensive presence. But they're both two-way players, and they're tremendous, tremendous talents. We expect all five of these Generation Adidas players to go early and perhaps even number one. A lot of people saying Philip Mayaka is that guy. We shall see as Austin gets on the clock. But first, as is tradition, a few words from MLS Commissioner Don Garber. Commissioner, you have the floor. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Major League Soccer Super Draft presented by our great partner, Adidas. To the fans that are watching on MLSsoccer.com, on Facebook, on Twitter, and YouTube, we thank you for joining us today. And a special welcome to all the prospective draft picks and their families for joining us virtually today. Today is the start of a new chapter for these young men, for their families, and everyone associated with helping to drive their development of their soccer careers as they pursue their dream of becoming professional players. Like the players and all the families that are joining us virtually, I am joining you from my home. As the pandemic continues, we're taking every step that we can to protect the health of everyone involved in Major League Soccer, as well as throughout our communities. As we celebrated our 25th season last year, we were all faced with great challenges due to the pandemic. But our players, our coaches, our staff, and, and our fans, we all persevered and we were able to regain much of the momentum that we had going into the 25th season. This season, we'll see the launch of Austin FC, our 27th team and the club with the first overall selection in today's Super Draft. And Austin will open up a great new stadium that reflects the true spirit of the city of Austin. In addition, we're gonna have two other new stadiums that are gonna open up in MLS this year, one for the Columbus Crew and another one in Cincinnati for FC Cincinnati. You know, the construction of world-class soccer stadiums and training facilities is a really important part of the major investment that our league and our teams, our owners are continuing to make in player development. In September, we introduced MLS Next, possibly the most important innovation our league has ever made in player development. When U.S. soccer ceased operations of the DA Academy, our league quickly jumped in and we launched a youth league with more than 11,000 players across nearly 115 academies and elite youth clubs. MLS Next provides the best competition, the strongest and most focused talent evaluation, and just the greatest coaching to maximize every young player's potential. We're clearly in an age where youth development is such an important part of our league, and today's Super Draft is a very important part of that movement. For all the players that are selected today, this will be a day that you and your families will never forget. If you look at the immediate impact that have been made by so many players over our league's history, and particularly in recent Super Drafts, you're gonna see that your selection, your decision, is the first step of a future in professional soccer that has no limits. Just a year ago, Daryl DK was chosen fifth overall by Orlando City. Daryl went on to score eight goals in MLS and is now part of the U.S. national team player pool. His Orlando City teammate Chris Mueller, who was selected three years ago in the Super Draft, scored 10 goals last year and is now currently in camp with the U.S. national team in Florida. Now let's remember some of the best players who've ever played in our league came through the MLS Super Draft. Clint Dempsey, Taylor Twelman, Michael Bradley, Josie Altidore. So all of you are joining a great list of fantastic players. So we wish the best to all the great young players that are here today as you embark on this next chapter in your professional soccer careers. And now, let's get started. Austin FC, you are on the clock. You are on the clock. That's what we've all wanted to hear. Now we wait three minutes to see what Austin FC will do with their first ever MLS Super Draft pick. Uh, Doyle, take us through what they have so far, the way it works. You're an expansion team. You're building, building, building all the way up till opening day and beyond. Yeah, and I expect them to keep doing that, but they have a good, solid foundation, a mix of guys with MLS experience, like 
Nick Lima, Ben Sweat, and of course Alex Ring at, at defensive midfield. And then they've already imported a, a number of South Americans, Cecilio Dominguez uh, and Rodney Redis on the wings. They're very heavy on the wings. Uh, but we're showing you Alex Ring clips here because they paid a lot of allocation money for him and he is worth it. If there's a lesson to take from what Nashville did last year, it's if you get the spine right, if you're able to dominate in central midfield, then you will have a pretty good expansion season. So I, I don't think it's wrong of them to pay as much allocation money as they did to, to try to get that right. And Alex Ring, over the course of his MLS career, has absolutely been worth it. All right, Charlie, as we take a look at the depth chart, as we see it right now for Austin FC, take a look at what you're thinking as far as this player pool and what fits best. So many people in their mock drafts and otherwise have said, Philip Mayaka, Philip Mayaka, Philip Mayaka with that number one pick mm -hmm. out of Clemson. Do you think that will be the pick and would it be the right pick? It would be the right pick. Philip Mayaka is is as talented as they come coming out of college soccer. This is a player that was wanted by La Liga side Levante because of his skill, his tactical intuition of the game. He knows when to pop up. He has great instincts, great habits. And this is a player who can insert right into the starting lineup and a player that is compatible with Alex Ring. And that's what you want. Daniel Pereira is also another choice that you have here who will also fill a need. You need two players who can come in in the midfield to play with Alex Ring, one who is more attack-minded and one who is box-to-box. -box. Both of those players fit the bill. And then you also have a need uh, in the striker position for Austin. Right now, I think they're going to stick with the central midfielder player, and, and those two are, are the top picks. Is it's got to be Mayaka. Yeah. It's I mean, got to be it's gotta, No, I mean, and the comparable is like Dax McCarty with speed. Right, because Dax came in as kind of a number eight, but he won the ball. He was able to advance the ball, hit very smart passes, not necessarily visionary, but just repeatedly getting his team into good positions. And that's what Mayaka did for a couple of years for arguably the best program, well, one of the best programs in college soccer. He's got range, he's got skill, he wins the ball. I, I, I think he is the most clear-cut number one pick since Kyle Lahren in 2015, or maybe going all the way back to Steve Zakawani at number one in 2009 for another expansion team that wore green uh, in the Seattle Sounders. So I will be shocked right here if it's anybody but Philip Mayaka. 10 seconds, Charlie. If it's not Mayaka, who would it be? Pereira. It's, it's Danny Pereira if it's not Mayaka. All right, we shall see. A couple ACC products. The uh, clock is ticking for Austin FC as they make their first ever pick. We are still waiting for that pick to be in. Might that mean trade rumblings? TBD. We shall find out. I will be told as you are in my ear. <laughs> as we think about 2021 for Austin FC, it's a strange year. It's a strange super draft, and there are a lot of things that are different. There's no combine this time around. Sporting Kansas City did go out of their way to help everybody out and have that invitational at the end of 2020, Charlie. As we wait for this pick, Walk me through how teams were able to scout what they were seeing and what some limitations might have been in their evaluation process. Well, it's this year was the challenge for everybody and including the college prospect. You didn't have as many games as you normally would. The season was short and ACC was really the only, the, the full regular season and an ACC tournament. So uh, kudos to all the coaches, the staff, the medical staffs um, for, for putting together a season and having, allowing these kids to go and showcase their talent. So, um, it, it was a great season considering how shortened it was. But again, now you're looking at some players who haven't had a competitive game since 2019. How does that delay their development? That's another thing. Maybe some players developed throughout this stage, working hard in the spring season um, and behind closed doors. So it, it really comes down to the scouts. What were they able to find out? How many scouts were able to go out and, and watch these kids? All right, the pick is in. We have a name. It's time to go to Austin and Claudio Reyna. But first, a few words from one of Austin's most famous native sons. At Austin FC, we're here to welcome anyone ready to add to the legend of this town. Verde. Let it be woven into this club like the roots of the oak on our crest. Because today, yes... Those roots deepen and our colors grow richer as we welcome not only another member to the Austin FC family, but another Austinite to the legend of this city. Three, two, one. Austin FC selects Daniel Pereira. Danny Pereira out of Virginia Tech University. 
from Venezuela to Virginia Tech, and now the number one overall pick in the MLS Superdraft 2021, presented by Adidas. Looking like a box to box, and this is a little bit of a surprise, Doyle. We talked all about Philip Mayaka, and uh, we were wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stunned by this pick. Ferreira is awesome, though. He, he, you could see from these highlights why he went number one overall. He's super technical. He, he's really dogged in there as well. So even though he's been mostly an attacking midfielder, he has a bit of a nasty streak to him and will do some work to win the ball back. Um, and with the number one pick, you're expecting a guy that you can plug and play. So he will get a lot of minutes for this Austin team. Uh, it's not the direction I thought they were going to go, but he was one of the consensus top three players on the board. Mm, and what a moment it will be for Danny. And his family, a little bit of surprise there. Some hugs. You love to see it, Charlie. The clapping in the background. Got to get the bear hug going. He is going to Austin as we await FC Cincinnati being uh, here for the second pick. Uh, what do you make of this? Are you surprised as Doyle? Uh, what are they getting? You know, I'm so happy for him. And, and, and his head coach at Virginia Tech, Mike Brizendine, they really developed this kid. He, he is a stud. He's talented. He's tough, like, like uh, you said, Doyle. Two-way player. He's he at first freshman year last year. I thought defensively this year he really took it on uh, his whole game up a notch. Being aggressive in the in the final third, he's taking shots from everywhere. He's very confident. So they got a player who can play multiple positions, but he is a he's a player who's not afraid of the challenge. And I think he's going to grow under Josh Wolf. It's a perfect fit, and and I'm not surprised by the pick at all. Of course, you have the cap considerations of the Generation Adidas tag. I also had someone around the league tell me they think Christian Roldan could be a sort of comparison for Danny Pereira. If that tells you anything about what people think about this player out of Virginia Tech University. Now, we have 26 more picks here in the first round. We got a minute 15 till Cincinnati make that pick. Doyle, you want to go back out there on the limb? What do you think they're going to do here? I mean, I, I thought Mayaka was going to be on the board. To me, for a team like Cincinnati that needs help everywhere, Look, I know they already have Fankri Amaya, who they took with the number one, and they, he plays similarly to Mayaka, but why not pair those guys? That's number one. But the other thing is they need such a huge amount of help on that back line. And in Ethan Bartlow, uh, I think there's a clear-cut best center back in this draft. So it's maybe not the decision, the easy decision that I thought it was going to be for Cincinnati. I thought it would just be check the box, take a center back, and call it a day. But they have to consider Mayaka here, Charlie. They do, but it, it's such a similar player, style-wise, size, to Frank Yamaya, to, to Ben Mines, who they brought in. I think you you, you have to improve this defensive uh, side because they need help. The, the three in the back, whether they play three in the back or four in the back, they need a stud center back, someone who's big, going to win all the challenges in the air and be committed to defending. I think you, you go and you get the best defender. Yep. Stom, of course, into his full <laughs> season with FC Cincinnati. They're trying to find depth, trying to find quality as well. If you were to say best player on the board, Doyle, as we wait for this pick to be finalized, who would that be, regardless of need for FC Cincinnati? It's Mayaka. The only other argument would be Calvin Harris, who's a, a winger, maybe could end up being kind of a run the lines number nine from, uh, from Wake Forest. Uh, consensus, I think, second best player in this draft, but uh, so he could go here as well because Cincinnati need help up top. Um, but I, the more I think about it, the more I'm leaning towards Ethan Bartlow, the generation Adidas center back from, from the University of Washington. That's who I would expect them to pick right here. Uh, but that three-minute that three minute <laughs> cutoff is a little bit soft at this point, isn't it? Uh, it's in. We are ready. Hunter Freeman, the director of scouting and player recruitment in Cincinnati, has this one for us. The second overall pick in the MLS Super Draft 2021 presented by Adidas. In just two short years, what will rise on this site will be seen and experienced around the world. Blue off the board. Ball gets through. Oh, Cruz! He will stop that one. Steps to the ball. Piton makes the save. FC Cincinnati select Calvin Harris from Wake Forest. Calvin Harris out of Wake Forest, a fascinating story from England to Hong Kong to Australia and the Phoenix, and now from Wake to FC Cincinnati. He's an electric winger, Charlie. We thought they might go back line. They went for the verb. What do you think? Well, I'm not surprised because they only scored 12 goals last year. So they need help, but they need help everywhere. 
So in this instance, I don't think that was the player they needed, although Calvin Harris is, is super electric. He's a player that you want on the field because he can create for himself and others. So he's going to open up the game for Cincinnati, but still a problem defensively for Cincinnati in goal, on the back line, and in midfield. There are a number of holes they still need to fill. They will address those elsewhere or perhaps later in the draft. Applause. His college teammate, Andrew Pannenberg, giving him a little daps. Calvin Harris going second overall. A lot of tough decisions he's made in his young career, including going to live alone in Australia at uh, the age of 14 to pursue that professional career. Doyle, what does this say to you from FC Cincinnati? Well, they were at their limit for international roster slots, and Calvin Harris is an international, so you know that there are more moves to come. Uh, but this kid, he's a legit top-end talent. I've had guys around the, the league compare him to Albert Elise, and we know how good Albert Elise was in this league. Uh, so, you know, maybe this indicates that they were a little more comfortable with their back line than, than we all were with it. Um, and certainly this indicates that they expect big things and big minutes from Calvin Harris. As, as Charlie said, they struggled badly uh, creating and finishing chances last year. The, the kid, you assume, will get his chance to do the job in 2021. Congratulations to Calvin Harris. A big moment for him. Much work to do, of course. We're on to pick three. The Colorado Rapids are on the clock. They got this pick earlier today via trade with the Houston Dynamo. Colorado trading the sixth pick they'd gotten from the fire. For the number three overall pick, they also had to send 200K in general allocation money to Houston. There is 50K rolling around, depending on how the performance of this pick goes. Pereira off the board, Calvin Harris off the board, reading between the lines, between the mock drafts and all the scuttlebutt. This, to me, Doyle says we are to Philip Mayaka, and that is likely going to be the pick. I mean, I thought, the, I thought they were trading up to get Danny Pereira, because if you were going to sell Cole Bassett, then Danny Pereira would be like the natural fill-in for that spot with Pereira off the board. They don't have a ton of, of depth in central. They have to take Philip Mayaka. They just they just have to do it right here, right? Is it a have to, Charlie? I mean, we I, I feel like our uh, our predictions on these first two picks have us looking have a little silly. <laughs> uh, it, you know, I wouldn't say it's crystal clear because Brett Halsey also is a, is a phenomenal talent, and this is a player who can play multiple positions: right backs, central midfield, and attacking central midfield. He has great vision. Uh, he's he's done a, a tremendous job under George Galnovich at U University of Virginia, so you know how they produce players. Um, I would lean towards Mayaka, but I would not be shocked if they go in that direction. We do know that the Rapids value the Super Draft. Andre Shinashiki plucked out of there a couple of years ago in their starting lineup. You can look at Wallace Obabakar, Keegan Rosenberry, both guys they traded for that were taken in the Super Draft. Pork Smith, the GM out there, he really understands it. They've moved up twice. Let's try to get this point. The pick is in as we wait for it to be finalized. You have uh, left back as depth parts. Well, I, I spoke too soon. The pick is in. Let's now go out to Colorado and Porg Smith for the third pick of this Super Draft. Feeding Lewis. Lewis in on goal. And Jonathan Lewis. That was sublime. It's Kellen Acosta. And Acosta's down the back of the net. Drops to Rosenberry. What a goal. What a goal. Colorado Rapids select midfielder Philip Mayaka from Clemson. Philip Mayaka, he dropped and the Rapids swooped. Makes you wonder if this was maybe who they were going after all along, knowing who would go one and two. How does this change the roster and where might he fit in in year one, Doyle? Well, I, I don't think there's a clear starting spot for him, which is the big difference between this going here and, and going to Austin. But that, it, it might be a better fit in a way because he's going to a better team. The Rapids are a playoff team. They have three clear starters in central midfield, but not much beyond that. So whether it's getting minutes to give Jack Price a rest as the number six or to give Kellen Acosta, who plays as a number eight, give, to give him a rest, um, it makes a lot of sense. And we've already seen really good work from Robin Frazier in terms of developing the young players on that team. So it's not like he's not going to be the number one pick um, very clearly, but he's in a spot now where he can compete and earn minutes for a very good MLS team. And, and that's a pretty soft landing. Some applause there. Colorado Rapids, he goes. They've shown a good uh, 
propensity for developing young talent, a nice place to end up for Philip Mayaka, 2019 Mac Herman Trophy semifinalist. Uh, over at Clemson, Charlie, they said that this is the most MLS-ready player that they've had in their program, and that includes the number one overall pick last year in Robbie Robinson. What makes him MLS-ready in your mind? It's just he's ready to adapt. He, he, he moves into the right spots. He has a good feel, great technique. He's got a good first touch. He can play the ball through the lines. He has good movement. And he's not afraid to mix it up with the big guys. He, he's small in stature, yet he's a tough tackler. And usually when he goes in, he wins it. So it, it's a great pick by Colorado. And it looks like he's going to be put into a, an environment where he's going to grow. He's going to get pushed. And he's going to have to work his way up. There are more Clemson players waiting to see where they will go in this draft. Here's how they reacted to the first to go off the board. Some polite applause there at the facility. We'll see what else we get from that room later on in this day. DC United is now on the clock, and as we wait for them to make their pick, what do you think about their needs, Doyle? Well, you know, with Hernan Lasada, and he played a 3-5-2 for the most part in Belgium, and they really only have three center backs on that roster. One of them is, uh, you know, maybe past a sell-by day, and Steve Birnbaum is, is injured, and Donovan Pines is still... So what I'm saying is that they need a center back, and there is a generation Adidas center back who is, you know, still on the board right here. Ethan Bartlow, who I thought was probably going to go second, he has dropped a little bit. It seems like a perfect fit, uh, both for the kid and for DC United in terms of what they need. And Charlie, this is a deep center back pool. Mm -hmm. Who are the other options? If DC says we need a center back, but it's not Bartlow for us, who might it be? Josh Bauer from New Hampshire. Uh, he, he's one of those big players, similar to a burn bomb, similar to uh, a Briant, just a, a dominant aerial force. He's strong, good leadership, a tough tackler, tough as nails, defend first. He's a team, team guy first as well. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if DC went with him, but they also need to fill the striker void. Ola Kamara was not involved all that much last year. Not a typical, they don't have another typical number nine, an attacking player who's going to hold up, make good runs in behind. So I wouldn't be surprised if they go with a, a clear cut finisher at number nine. Center back, outside back, some number nines. Those are positions that people have said there is something to choose from. As we wait for DC United's pick to be finalized, of course, the uh, big story is Hernan Losada. He is the new head coach of DC United just 15 months in to his career as a manager. All right, I believe that the pick is in. It is not, excuse me, it is not. <laughs> I am uh, I am, I'm getting the wrong information out here. Before I, I push forward here, what do we think about Hernan Lozada and that signing, Doyle? What does it mean for this club? It, it came a little bit out of left field, but it says uh, ambition. He was highly thought of in Belgium. Yeah, he was highly thought of. And, um you know, the, the reaction in Belgium was, was a little bit of sadness because his team had been so entertaining and they had brought a, a little bit of a different kind of flair to that league, um, which I think bodes well for D.C. We also know that they, uh, they interviewed a lot of people. So when you interview that many coaches, you hope you get the ultimate decision correct. We will speak. To Hernan Losada on Friday on Extra Time, driven by Continental. If you haven't already subscribed or you don't listen, do so. It is the best way to keep up with the league twice a week, normally Mondays and Thursdays, anywhere you listen to podcasts or on YouTube. It was a little surprising they went this direction, Charlie. Uh, what do you think of the state of that squad overall, regardless of what they're able to pick up in the Super Draft? What are DC working with? They they have a good core. When you talk about Julian Gressel, Moses Nyman, a young player who's coming into his own, Griffin Yao, as well as uh, Ariola. You have players who can make a difference. They need to get Edison Flores up and running. And then, you know, if you get a, an attacker who can create space and make runs in behind, a player like a Kamarni Smith from Clemson, that, that comes to mind, uh, someone who was a top talent who really developed this year, I would not be surprised if they went with Kamarni Smith or an Edward Kiza from, from Pittsburgh, who was also a clear-cut finisher. Um, I'm interested to see which way uh, David, David Casper goes. <laughs> All right, hedging his bets. The pick is in. We are now ready, I can happily say. On to David Casper in D.C. D.C. United selects from Clemson University. Kamarni Smith. 
Oh, well, Charlie knew something uh, that maybe we all didn't. Kamarni Smith is the choice from England. Showed some real ability this year, Charlie. You watched him a ton as we see him go 1v1 and do special things. What could he do with DC? Oh, he, he's, a, he's a tremendous talent as well. A lot of pace last year was, was looked at just making runs in behind, stretch defense, stretch defenses, go to his left. This year, he developed into a premier goal scorer being able to play the number nine position, being able to play across the front three. He's dynamic. He holds up the ball. He can combine. His feet have gotten better, but he makes intelligent runs. And this year has really proved that he's going to finish the chances when he gets it in front of goal. There is news as well here. DC United are back on the clock for that fifth pick. They've made a trade with Atlanta United, but here is Kamarni. Yes, sir. On to the nation's capital, he will go to play for a new head coach in Hano Nasada. Get him scarfed up, get the hat on. Congratulations, Kamarni Smith. Doyle, uh, what do you make of this trade going down? DC moving again to go back to back here in this draft. Well, I said all that stuff about Ethan Bartlow, so I am going to assume that they take, you know, they took Kamarni Smith to help the front line at pick number four, and now um, get a little help on that back line at number five, and also have a, a generation Adidas tag as well which helps you in terms of roster management uh, I, I like this type of, of aggressiveness you know DC uh, have in the past done really really well via the super draft and uh, these guys are talented and if they're put in the right position uh, you know as we saw from the number five pick last year and Daryl DK these guys can succeed so uh, it, it'll be interesting I mean I've been wrong on just about every prediction so far uh, <laughs> but I am going to assume that it's Bartlow this time uh, and DC can walk out of this out of this draft with two contributors one on the front line and one on the back line Bartlow Charlie give us sort of an in-depth scouting report here I've heard really well really good with his feet maybe some size question marks maybe a center back maybe a right back how do you see him yes uh, all left foot and he's he's a little bit shorter as a center back, but he's he's tough. He's like a bull. If this is the player you want to go with, you know you can build out of the back. He has good technique. He can serve a ball. He can hit a ball hit a ball well. My only concern would be the one v one defending. If if he's isolated in Major League Soccer nowadays with these athletes, when these guys are running at you full full speed, it's going to be tough to defend. So. If he's smart tactically, then he's going to succeed. So if, if that's where Houston and, and Tab Ramos see that he's the, the guy, then it'll be interesting to see how he adapts and how he's ready to, to challenge for, for a spot. Sounds like more like center back, maybe left back, depending on a team sees Ethan Bartlow. Why have we seen the center backs drop to this point, Doyle? Is this just, as you said, sort of on extra time the other day, a lot of teams are looking at this saying best talent, best talent, best talent, or are there question marks about this pool? No, I think that it's pretty clear that this is a best talent available draft, um, that, that teams went in here and uh, went for the guy who they felt had the best chance of making an impact in MLS regardless of position. Um, and that's th there's nothing wrong with that approach. Like that approach tends to work. I would be a little bit more targeted. We've seen over the years um, college center backs come into MLS top five picks uh, and do really, really well. Um, but there, you know, there are a lot of different ways to build a roster in this league. All right, blow the whistle. That's a timeout for DC United as they mull their options with that <laughs> number five pick overall pick. <laughs> hey, man, business is brisk. You never know what's going on behind closed doors. Dave Casper's cell phone blowing up right now. That timeout will be three minutes as we wait for DC United or perhaps a trade to go down. Let's take a look at the head coaching changes around Major League Soccer heading into the 2021 season. Of course, Hernan Losada, the most recent hire around the league. But you have Phil Neville coming in as well, Gabriel Heinze in Atlanta, Chris Armas in Toronto, Greg Vanny. The move we all expected, the LA Galaxy. And though it was not done this year or recently, Josh Wolf will make his managerial debut. Charlie, which one of these gets you most excited? In particular, uh, those outside Hernan Losada, who we've already discussed here. Yeah, it, it, no question for me, it's Josh Wolf. I've seen him, I played with him, I watched him as a pro, and then getting to see him grow as a coach under Greg Berhalter with the U.S. Men's National Team, he's a student of the game. He loves the game. He understands the connection from player to player, that you have to get the most out of each player, the management part, but as well as some players need growth. Everyone needs to grow. Everyone needs to improve and doing it in the right way. So I'm excited for Josh Wolf. What about you, Doyle? What stands out among that list? Oh, Phil Neville. Unquestionably, it's Phil Neville. Uh, you know, it, MLS, 
uh, <laughs> MLS has uh, penetrated the consciousness uh, of of global soccer fans in certain ways. And David Beckham hiring Phil Neville to be the head coach in Miami. Um, I mean, I, I sound like Alexi Lalas here, but the headlines are just absolutely spectacular <laughs> because it's all about it's all about entertainment. And I feel like that's going to be really entertaining in a lot of different ways. In a lot of ways, I think that that particular signing said, hey, this is my team, David Beckham. I did not like the way year one went. I'm here to try to right that ship. Now, I do love that they went and hired Chris Henderson as their chief soccer yep. officer as well because you're hedging your bets a little bit. Phil Neville, we don't know what he will be as a club manager. We don't know what he'll be in MLS or what his level of expertise is with this league and what it takes to win here. But we definitely know that Chris Henderson has that knowledge from his days with the Sounders, whether it be scouting, player identification, or recruitment. That is a really heady hire, in my opinion, by Inter Miami. We saw there Dave Casper chatting on the phone, figuring out where this thing is going. Uh, what do we think? Are we going to make a prediction as we uh, as we watch him take calls and try to lock something <laughs> down here, whether it be a pick or a trade? Uh, do we want to make a prediction? Do we want to just try to run out the clock so we don't have to? What do you guys think? I mean, I've already made my I'm, prediction, I'm going, right? Uh, yeah, I I think he's going to go striker, and he, he maybe he's wheeling and dealing. But maybe he is. Pins I, and needles here. He's going striker here. Pins and needles around the country. Do they have, a, do they have another timeout to use? Do they, do they, they get don't. Another Google? team could take a timeout, though. In the rules, two timeouts could be taken back-to-back, -back, so we could be looking at another wait to see if maybe this is a chance to move this pick around. It is a big TBD. There are three generation Adidas players off the board at this point. Just to wrap up what we've seen in the first four picks mm -hmm. for you as we wait to see what DC United will do. Austin FC taking Danny Pereira out of Virginia Tech with that first overall pick. Calvin Harris going to FC Cincinnati, the winger, out of Wake Forest with the second pick. Philip Mayaka, that original GA class, exhausted after three picks going to the Colorado Rapids who traded up to the Houston Dynamo no for the spot. And no Marty defender, Smith, no Smith and fourth. All right, let's find out. DC no United, defender. the pick is in. Let's go back to the nation's capital. DC United selects from Wake Forest University, Mike DeShields. Mike DeShields, that's a defender we did not talk about as we tried to make a prediction of what would happen here. Wake has been so good the last couple of years, Charlie. What kind of uh, center back are they getting here? Quality, quality, quality. Leader. And Mark McKenzie came out of Wake Forest too. So Bobby Muse is pro 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 really starting to create uh, an identity with top center backs out of Wake Forest. And he's he can even go back to Ike Opara. But what Michael DeShields brings to the table is he's a great organizer. He's confident on the ball, great athleticism. This is a player who's gonna come in and, and challenge for minutes right away. He, he offers something different because like Birnbaum and Briant, who are big physical and, and one of those really aerial dominant center backs, Michael DeShields is more composed. He reads the game well, he likes the ball at his feet. And, and everyone everyone loves him on the, in that Wake Forest locker room. So I, I'm happy for this kid. He suffered an injury this year. And look at him. He's healthy. He bounced back. Uh, it's a great moment for him and his family. I love it. I love it. His brother, I think, jacked up. Jacked up. A Baltimore, Maryland kid. So he's going to be close to home. It's going to be easy for folks to go watch him play at DC uh, United in the nation's capital. Pull on the hat, young man. Yes, sir. What an awesome moment for Michael DeShields. Uh, Doyle, we have two minutes here till the Houston Dynamo make their selection. They have been busy today, to say the least. They traded down. They went and got Derek Jones. They're trying to get younger under Tab Ramos. What have you made of those moves and their entire offseason so far? Well, I mean, they have gotten younger in a bunch of different spots, including the, the Argentine winger that they're bringing in. Uh, you know, trading for Fafa Pico didn't make them younger, but I think it made them a more dynamic pressing team. They're going to want to defend from the front a little bit better than they did uh, last season. And Arudi will certainly help with that as well. But Tim Parker is the big addition. Their, their back line uh, struggled pretty mightily last year. And even though Parker wasn't at his best, he didn't look like he did in 2018. He's still a very good center back in this league. That addresses a need. That said... They are still very thin at center back. Um, mm -hmm. 
So for the fourth straight pick, I'm going to predict that they <laughs> that on the board is going to take a center back. I got it right last time, just not the right center back. So, what do you think, Charlie? We did the mock draft on extra time. Put yeah. yourself in uh, in Tab Ramos's shoes. Put yourself in uh, Matt Jordan's shoes. Who would you be looking at? Well, you, you just traded for Tim Parker, who is a right-footed center back. It makes sense now to go with Ethan Bartlow, who's a left-footed uh, center back. So he's building out of the back and, and probably makes a, a great tandem with Parker because Parker has the pace and, and the athleticism, so you don't have to worry about that so much if he's tactically astute. So I wouldn't be surprised if here they go with Ethan Bartlow. All right. What do we think about that trade? And, and we haven't really discussed it. Extra time, stop taping, and boom, it came through. That's just the way it works. What about that 450000 in allocation mm -hmm. money and potentially up to a million for Tim Parker, Doyle, as we wait for this pick to be official? Hey, if, it, if he plays so well that it makes it a million dollars worth of allocation cash, we've seen it from Ike Opara's performance in Minnesota. We've seen it from Walker Zimmerman's performance in Nashville. A center back who plays that well for you is worth every single penny. All right, let's go out to Houston and Tab Ramos for the sixth pick of the MLS Superdraft 2021 presented by Adidas. With the sixth pick, Houston Dynamo FC select Ethan Bartlow. Ethan Bartlow, there it is, out of Washington. Starter, center back, generation Adidas signing, laid on. It finally happened for you, Doyle. What are they getting? You know, they're getting a center back who they will plug and play, probably not as a starter right off the bat, but certainly someone who could uh, take minutes from minor Figueroa uh, at left center back. And as you can see, he's got a right foot too. So, uh, you know, Todd Ramos likes to play in a 4-3-3. He likes his center backs to be a little bit active, stepping into the midfield defensively to make plays. That's going to be the toughest part of adjusting to MLS um, is being a center back who kind of plays a 360 degree game. Um, he won't have to do it as a starter right away, but I do think they'll, they'll expect him to take up some minutes in 2021. All right, 2019 Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. All hugs right now for Ethan Bartlow. There with his college teammate, Freddie Kleeman. Uh, before we keep it rolling, let's talk to the number one overall pick in this year's Super Draft via Devin Kerr. He chatted with Danny Pereira a little bit while ago. 1,475 players have been drafted in MLS history, 26 of which have had the opportunity to go number one overall. The number one overall pick in the 2021 MLS Super Draft, Danny Pereira out of Virginia Tech. Tell you what, man, you just fell into the luckiest 1% in MLS history. There are very few people I'm going to ask this, so I have to ask, what does it feel like? Uh, it's an honor. You know, I wasn't really expecting it. Um, obviously, there's a lot of talented players in the draft, and um, it's, it's just an honor that uh, in a moment that I'll never forget. Danny, there was a quote that your coach, Mike Brizendine out of Virginia Tech, said to me that he's never seen a kid quicker in his first three, four, or five steps. But then he went on to say, still doesn't know if he got the best out of you. Tell me, what is the best out of you? What, is, what do you want to see in the future? Uh, obviously, the MLS um, is way different. Um, the league is growing. And uh, it's good to know that I'm coming to a league that is starting to grow. And um, I hope in the MLS, my first year, I think I'm just going to have to adapt uh, it's going to be a lot of um, training, obviously, hard work. And, um, yeah, I think my first uh, – my expectations are going to be just learn from the big guys on the team, the, the veterans. Um, it's just going to be a whole new chapter that I'm ready to take on. Celebrating with you today. Oh, you got to love the moment. His parents uh, are his blanking mom, him. Dad. A uh, great moment for Danny Pereira and his family. They will never forget this day. Now he's got to find his way into that Austin FC 11 or squad and try to make an impact in year one as a professional. We got 30 seconds to RSL with the seventh pick. Where might they go? Charlie, what do you think? What is the need and what might be a match for that need? Well, you got a left wing spot. I still see Brett Halsey on the board. This is an influential player who can play in the midfield, but that's not a need for RSL. Striker center back, left wing, those are the players that they should be looking to identify right now and, and select. 
you you have a number of options. Um, I, I love what I've seen from the ACC. We've seen what Mike Mike Noonan has done with Clemson and Bobby Muse with Wake Forest. Uh, Justin Malou is one player that stands out to me. Uh, you have Brett Holsey. You have also uh, Iricozzi Donaciano at UVA, who's who's a versatile player. So. There are a number of options. Um, Luther Archimede from Syracuse is also another <laughs> player who can who can create problems. Cover so. your bases, baby. Yeah. Cover your I'm bases. Yeah. Charlie, hey, Charlie hey, listen. everybody eligible. Listen, there is uncertainty with RSL in a lot of ways. They are still uh, looking for an owner, of course, but they have some rumors out there. Maybe Bobby Wood coming in. The Athletic Sam Stachel reported that. But the pick is in. Number seven all overall. Let's go out to Elliott Fall in uh, Utah. Real Salt Lake select Brett Halsey, University of Virginia. All five generation Adidas players are off the board through seven picks. Brett Halsey, a late addition to the class out of the University of Virginia. Do I've heard sort of conflicting thoughts on where he might translate at the professional level. Where do you think he'll play? Where do you think RSL are looking at him for? I think he can give them minutes both at central midfield and at right back and, and from a you know a top 10 pick uh, getting a guy with that kind of versatility makes sense but if you look at RSL's roster as Charlie said they're pretty stacked in central midfield at right back they only have Aaron Herrera so I would assume he is going to RSL uh, to earn minutes as Aaron Herrera's backup primarily in year number one Aaron Herrera could spend a lot of time with U23s this year here he is, Charlie. He's on the turtleneck game as well, man. Yes. We gotta see, gotta love it. With family enjoying the moment, his professional career beginning with Real Salt Lake. Brett Halsey, an ACC All Tournament team player. As we wait for Orlando to make their pick, of course they got this one in the Portland Timbers earlier today for a hundred thousand in GAM. Uh, I think it's worth pointing out that all these GA players are off, and therefore all that cap relief that comes with that designation is off. What's the best of the best now for you, Doyle, in terms of talent as we start to think about why Orlando City traded up, mm -hmm. what they thought maybe they could pick up with this eighth pick? I, I would assume, I think the best player left on, on the board uh, is, is Charlie's guy from New Hampshire, Josh Bauer, the big center back. Um, though there's another center back, uh, Nabi Kibagunshi from UC Davis. He could be the call here. And then there are a couple of forwards in Ed Kiza from Pittsburgh. Uh, and then David Egbo from uh, from Akron. Those are probably the next four in some order. That said, Orlando City really need a left back behind Jao Moutinho. When he got injured last year, they lost the ability to spread the field like they had during the MLS's back tournament. They became a much less dynamic team. And there are three or four left backs in the mix here uh, that I expect to go between 10 and 20. It's not too much of a reach to pick, say, a Matt DeRosa or an Aiden Stanley or even a Josh Drack at number eight. We shall see. You're looking at an Orlando side that has a left back, though he hasn't managed to stay healthy all year, and John Moutinho, that was a number one overall pick yeah. by LAFC. So you know that they understand the value. You know Oscar Preha does as well. I saw Kingston the Lion just staring me down in there. I'm sorry, Kingston. I left you out of my mascot's best 11. We'll have to uh, figure out how we go forward from here. 30 seconds to Orlando City, Charlie. What do you think they will do? I'm going to go with defensive reinforcement. You have Antonio Carlos. You have Robin Johnson, who, who are were both solidified as a center back. I I think they're going to go along the back line, whether it's a center back or a left back. I think that's where Oscar Perea is going to go. All right, we'll find out if you are right. The pick is in. Out to Central Florida we go, and to Orlando for the number eighth overall pick. Nani causing the consternation and taking their claim. Benji Michel, oh, what a touch! Benji's in. The shot is there and saves it! Can you believe that? Orlando City selects number 35, Derek Dodson from Georgetown University. Derek Dodson, goal scorer from the Hoyas. A lot of Hoyas having success in MLS over recent seasons. We thought maybe defensive reinforcements, but they're going back to the well. 
Got Daryl DK last year. Doyle, here comes Dodson. Yeah, these guys met in the 2019 College Cup, and Dodson was very, very good. I see him as a pure center forward, so this is maybe a little bit weird, but there is the sense that he could play on the wing uh, as well. He certainly has MLS level size and athleticism. I think he reads the game well. He doesn't need a lot of the ball to, to impact the game. A little bit like Tesho Akindeli in that sense. So, like, just, again, this is the best, as per the team's vision, this is the best player available, regardless of need. You see that MLS next affiliation, Soccer's FC, for Derek Dodson, the eighth overall pick. All right, let's go back to Devin Kerr. He had a chat with Calvin Harris just a little bit ago, the second pick to FC Cincinnati. Here with the number two overall pick in the 2021 MLS Super Draft, Calvin Harris. Calvin, stay with me on this one. United Kingdom, Hong Kong, MLS Super Draft number two in the United States. I feel like at this point in time, you have taken over the pecking order in your house with your father and Sheffield United legend, Terry Harris. <laughs> I mean, not quite. Um, you know, my dad played football at Sheffield for a bit, but uh, I don't think he would class himself as a legend. But, um, you know, I'm sure he's extremely proud of me and, you know, getting the second pick here today. Kevin, let me ask you this. A lot of guys coming into the draft felt like you might have the most upside out of the entire class coming in. What does your mind do and where does it go when you hear something like that about the talent that these guys think you have? You know, you, you, you may hear the, you know, the noise from outside, but the main thing is just to, you know, do what you do on a daily basis and not really to listen to everything you hear, you know, externally. Um, and that's kind of what I did throughout this process. And um, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm happy with where I am, and I'm just excited to be a part of Cincinnati. Fantastic college career. We look forward to seeing you in 2021 in the MLS, my friend. No, thank you very much. Forget what you hear. Look at what you see in the background there for Calvin Harris, just flexing with the trophies. <laughs> nice uh, program they've got over there at Wake Forest. Vancouver Whitecaps now a minute away. What do we think, in Doyle? I'll start with you. Do we make more predictions about what we think they're going to do, or uh, do we stick to the roster and team <laughs> needs? I kind of feel it's the latter. I, I feel like maybe the, the the only thing that's more difficult than predicting MLS you know game scores is predicting the MLS Super Draft. So maybe we should stay away from predictions at this point. Uh, I will say that just looking at their depth chart, the clear need is a number 10, but teams don't get their number 10s through the Super Draft. So once again, we go back to whoever they deem to be the best player available. I've heard they really liked Egbo, the big center forward from, uh, from Akron. Um, we know that teams have had success taking center backs from the draft. Taking a left back is never a bad idea if you think he'll be able to play in MLS, especially because Ali Adnan might be on the block. All right, we'll see. If what you heard is right, Vancouver's pick is in. Before we hear who's taken number nine overall, just a reminder that there are things in life much bigger than soccer. Russell Tiber here from the Vancouver Whitecaps. I know this year has been challenging for all of us. I wanted to take this time to remind us that our mental health matters. Join us next Thursday by using the hashtag Bell Let's Talk, and Bell will donate five cents towards mental health initiatives. Let's get through this together. Vancouver Whitecaps FC select number 42 from Akron University, David Egbo. David Egbo out of Akron. There you go, Doyle. I'm going to count that as a hit hey. for you, man. He's got uh, 21 goals in three seasons for the Zips. Charlie, striker to striker. Give me a little evaluation here. Yes, he, he's a great finisher. Good on the ball. The only concern for him was can he defend? Can he start the press? But attacking as an attacking, pure attacking striker, probably the most talented finisher in, in the draft. So for Vancouver Whitecaps, now whether you're playing it in a two-striker system with Cavallini, this is a good partner. This is a, this is a player who's going to make a difference if he's given the confidence and the time to adjust to Major League Soccer. Well, you said that the Cat Whitecaps liked this player, and they proved that mm -hmm. true. What did they like about him, and why is he the right pick for them? Uh, he's smart in the box. He, he, you know, you saw a bunch of his goals from outside the box, but it's really he, he's very clever about finding spots inside the box and that not just a six yard box, but that sort of second six yard box um, and, and working off the ball. So I, I think that, you know, they see a guy who will be able to put the ball in the back of the net. Uh, we know that Lucas Cavallini is going to have a very busy year for Canada. Um, 
and Egbo might get some minutes as his backup uh, if they only go with a four two or if they only go with one striker and a four two three one, or they could go with a four four two. Though that would be a throwback. If you have Cavallini and Egbo up top, it would be like an old nineteen eighties style English team with two pretty big center forwards. Um, but it does give them a little bit of flexibility, and he's proved in his college career he's a he's a very quality player. Trying to get to the playoffs are the Vancouver Whitecaps. A minute 30 until Inter-Miami make their first pick of two in this first round of the Superdraft 2021 presented by Adidas. They have the 10th and they have the 26th. Chris Henderson, a chance to make a stamp on this team. He will make the selection. But join me now in singing happy birthday. Happy birthday. No, I'm just kidding. But happy 44th. To Phil Neville, welcome to the MLS family, Phil. We're glad to have you here. Uh, as we wait the minute that we must until they make this selection, though, it doesn't seem that busy, I must say, down there at the stadium. Where do you think they will go, Charlie? Where should Inter-Miami go? Well, uh, you have to go defense, defense, defense. You have Higuain, you have Matuidi, you have Lewis Morgan. You have players who are going to make a difference for you in the attacking third. Defensively, you had LGP who who, UK, who was brought in midseason, made a big difference, but you lost a goalkeeper in Luis Robles. And just there wasn't chemistry along that back line. So I think you, you have to go with a defensive player here. Phil Neville looking good in pink. <laughs> Hoping to see more of that on the field. They made the playoffs. There was success in that sense, but you do have to ask questions about where they are going given the complete overhaul in the front office and coaching staff in the off season, but uh, clearly inter Miami and the ownership said, this is not working for us. We have to make a change. And they have done. So, as I said, the new chief soccer officer is Chris Henderson. So much success helping build those Seattle Sounders teams that have been in the playoffs since the very jump. It would have taken him a lot to get him away from his hometown in Seattle. Well, it took uh, a little bit of a call. I'm sure from ownership from David Beckham. He's now in Miami and then Phil Neville, the new manager as well. The pick is now in. For Miami, let's go out to Chris Henderson to see who number 10 overall is. He's going to do it alone. Goes right opportunity for the cross. It's in the back of the net from Pizarro. Gonzalo wants it. Drops it and he scores. Comes back to Matuidi. Enter Miami selects Josh Penn from Indiana University. Josh Penn spent one year in college with Indiana, 22 games played, six goals, two assists. We saw another Indiana guy make an impact in MLS Cup with the crew after one year in college. They went for a younger prospect here, Doyle. They went with one with some high upside. Yeah, they did. He's a, he's a former U.S. youth international, got a couple games, I believe, with the U18 teams a couple of years ago. Um, was good with Indiana, Not didn't set the world on fire, but you could see from some of these highlights here, uh, he knows what he's doing around the box. Uh, he, he is a guy with a lot of pace and can be clever about finding his spots. Uh, I'm surprised he went as high as number 10, uh, but there's no question given his pedigree and the productivity that we saw from him, he, he's a first-round caliber talent. Yet another MLS next connection there with soccer's soccer FC, excuse me, for Josh Penn. A dream comes true for him, headed to Inter Miami. They also have the 26th overall pick. We're waiting to see who Austin will take with the 11th pick. They had the first overall, took Danny Pereira. Going third overall was Philip Mayaka, who we thought might go first, but he went to the Colorado Rapids. Devin Kerr the number chatted with him just a little while ago. For draft. Philip Mayaka from Clemson University. It seems like you guys in Clemson just grow on trees every single year, getting better, producing more draft talent. Any conversation, maybe in the war room or, or hanging out with your buddies, that the first adult water goes to whoever gets drafted first? Uh, it's just working out and encouraging each other, knowing what you're doing, knowing why you're in Clemson, and why you went to Clemson to play soccer. So just encouraging each other. Philip, one of the things the word that surrounded you coming into the draft was versatile, can play the six, can play the eight, can play the 10. Introduce yourself to the Colorado Rapids fans right now and tell them what you bring to the game. Uh, it's just a hard work and mentality to win. Knowing like whichever position you play, just have to give 100%. Make that like give the fans the trust and the players around you and make sure like 
you're a team player. You're a team player, not an individual player, but just a team player. I love it. Go get him in 2021, buddy. Thank you. Reading here off Twitter, a quote from Porig Smith about Philip Mayaka. Quote, when we talk about Philip, we talk about him being a number six, a Darlington Nagby. Does that sort of tone, pace setting, midfielder, TikTok make sense to you? Does he have the same upside as a Darlington Nagby, Charlie? You know what? No, I don't see that a comparison. <laughs> um, Darlington Nagby is one of the most gifted players I've ever seen playing in the United States when it comes to ball control, dribbling out of tight spaces, whether it's 1v1, 2v2, uh, 2v1, 1v3. He's very difficult because he has quick feet and he has that brilliance on the dribble. Phil Mayaka loves to engage. He's more of a passer. He likes to uh, play one touch, two touch, and then get pl play through the lines, where Nagby likes to dribble and play more side to side. So uh, in that respect, I understand they're both small and they both like the ball at their feet, but they're two completely different players. <laughs> we'll see how he fits in with the Rapids. And Robin Frazier, the pick is in, however, for the 11th overall selection in the 2021 MLS Super Draft presented by Adidas. To Austin we go for their second selection of the first round. With the 11th pick, Austin FC select Freddie Kleeman from University of Washington. Freddie Kleeman, Ethan Bartlow, partners. Six foot four is Freddie Kleeman. 18 games started in 2019. Doyle, uh, what is this pick for Austin? A little depth on the back line? Exactly that. He he has you know MLS size and aerial ability. He plays for he played for a program that puts guys into the draft every single year. Uh, some of them very, very good. Uh, and that kind of like writes the story for for Austin at center back. They're, they're four deep now at center back. And when you have that set, then you can start going elsewhere and addressing other needs on the roster. Here's the reaction. Oh, they're happy. They're happy. You've got a Dynamo player and you got an Austin FC player. Different sides of a potential rivalry here. Joe Corona jumps out as a starting point for that rivalry. Put the hat on, celebrate. Great moment for these two guys out of the University of Washington. We're waiting now for San Jose to make their selection. 12th overall. What might Mateus Almeida do? What has he been doing along with Jesse Fiorinelli this offseason? Doyle, going back to the well, two Mateus guys. It yeah. Seems. Yeah, I mean that, that's that's been the the mo since he got there. It was guys like Daniel Vega, Carlos Fierro, uh, Oswaldo Alanis, and just yesterday or two days ago, it, it was uh, El Chofis, the the number ten from Chivas Guadalajara. He is the latest addition for San Jose. Their starting lineup it looks set to me. Um, so once again, we're looking at a, a best player available regardless of need. The one caveat to that is that they really don't have a backup center forward behind Chris Wondolowski. And in Ed Kiza, there is a guy on the board. Now, Kiza didn't play this year for Pitt, but he, he's the same type of center forward as Wando in that he's a fox in the box. He's very good at finding those little gaps, always moving, um, and gets a lot of one-touch finishes. So if, you, if they're approaching it as, like, we need somebody who could take a 1,000 minutes from Wando this year, keep him fresh for the stretch run, Kiza would make some sense, but again, it's the MLS Super Draft, and as we saw repeatedly <laughs> in the first few picks, you're kind of stupid if you try to predict it. Ed Kiza, a couple games uh, into this season for Pitt, dismissed by the program, but two big seasons before that. Charlie, outside of Kiza, do any names stand out to you as you look at San Jose and their potential needs? Yes. I mean, one, they gave up 51 goals last year, number one in MLS, so the worst defense. So, in, in looking at those numbers, I would highly suggest you go with a defensive reinforcement. But if you're going to go with the number nine, uh, as you do need some some more depth there, uh, Luther Archimede from Syracuse uh, covers a lot of ground, comes from the French system, FC Sochaux. So he, he does have the tactical knowledge of, of where to be, where to go, and, and how to finish. I would like to see him because he is an athletic striker. He can pull defenders out of space and create more room for Espinosa and Fierro underneath. So 
that would be another option for San Jose if they were to go with an attacking player. Archimedia, an interesting story. Uh, you said FC Chasseau, who you know very, very well, Charlie, but a Guadeloupe U20 international didn't work out in France, came back to Syracuse, a little bit of a project player, has a high upside. Maybe teams uh, need to figure out how to get that out of him. Could Mateus Almeida be that sort of striker whisperer? How do they improve, though, this year, Doyle? If we're going to take this a little bit bigger picture as we wait for this draft pick to come in. They've got their style that they want to play. It's very distinctive. Mm -hmm. At moments, it looks gangbusters. At other moments, it looks off the rails. How do you find a middle ground, or you do you find a middle ground at all? There's been no middle ground with this team. They've either been playing great soccer or they've been playing terrible soccer. We saw that coming out of the MLS's back tournament. As Charlie said, they gave up 51 goals. It feels like 40 of them were in their first, like, seven games out of that tournament. And then down the stretch, they played really, really well. So they just have to find that consistency. But if you want to focus in on one thing, uh, they were terrible defending set pieces. They're just terrible defending set pieces. So from that point of view, maybe a big center back like Josh Bauer would make sense here. At the very least, you bring them on for the final 10 minutes of games when you're trying to close it out. The opponent's throwing the kitchen sink at you. You have another guy in there who could win the ball. We are 11 picks in. We are waiting for the 12th pick from the San Jose Earthquakes. And as soon as we have that, we will go straight out to San Jose. From uh, what you've seen so far with these 11 picks, Charlie, what's the one that stands out to you the most? The one that you're still sort of mulling or thinking about, whether it's surprise or applause, uh, as we've gone about almost halfway through the draft so far, the first round. I'm really, say. I'm really surprised with Inter Miami's selection uh, in in Penn, just because you look at their options. You have Robbie Robinson, who was the number one draft pick last year, who people f tend to forget because, um, you know, as a rookie, you have your ups and downs, and he wasn't all that involved last year. You have Lewis Morgan, you have Pizarro, you have Higuain. You have Carranza and you have Pellegrini. You have a number of attacking options. So unless they had planned on bringing Penn as an outside back to be trying to make that transition, which I, I'm not sure what his upside is at outside back, that's a shocking uh, uh, selection for me. All right, I got to cut you off because the pick is in in San Jose. Let's now go out to Jesse Fiorinelli for the 12th overall pick. San Jose picks Tommy Williamson from Calberti. Keeping it local, Thomas Williamson. Golden Bears, baby. 12 <laughs> starts, nine goals in 2019. 6 1. A little bit on the wiry side, uh, but shown an ability to finish in and around in the box. You mentioned center forward, Doyle. Here they go. Yeah, here they go. And I guess, you know, familiarity breeds a, you know the opposite of contempt and it, it breeds a, a bit of affection at this point they were able obviously to see him play a ton because cal is right up the street from san jose uh williamson regarded as a guy who can get to mls caliber um but probably not right away so this seems like a you know a draft and stash for a year or two in usl and uh you know try to hope that he has some, a similar type of developmental cycle that we've seen from guys with the Quakes over the past couple years under Almeida. All right. Uh, congratulations to Thomas Williamson. Staying local. That's awesome stuff. Michael DeShield stayed local with DC as well. Devin Kerr caught up with him. Joining us is the number five overall pick from DC United, Michael DeShields. Michael, little known fact, you are actually Bobby Muse, the head coach of Wake Forest's first ever recruit and now you're an MLS draft pick hanging out with mom. Walk me through it. What's it like? I mean, five years at Wake Forest, it, it's the best experience I could have ever asked for, you know. Uh, coach took a chance on me back then, and, and I developed in under the Wake Forest umbrella, and I'm a better man for it. And I can't thank Coach Bobby, the Wake Forest staff, E.T., Michael White, and Dave Bass enough, you know, as well as my mom, of course, staying right here, and my dad as well. But these are just all some of the people that have sacrificed so much for me to be here today. Michael, since you're kind enough to share the spotlight for mom, let's go to mom next. Mom, is this dream accomplished or dream just begun? Oh, man. Um, you know, this has been his dream since he was, I, I don't know, three years old. <laughs> and so it is, a, this is a huge first step in the dream. It's, 
it's absolutely part of the dream and he has a lot more growth and, and uh, years to go. Congratulations to you both and best of luck in the future. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much. Mom making sure that the expectations are spot on, excited for her boy, but saying, hey, 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 a little bit of work to be done, and you know it. The dream has just begun for you, Michael DeShields. Congratulations <laughs> on your selection, number five, to D.C. United as we wait for the Red Bulls. Doyle, walk us through how they have used this uh, mechanism in the past and what you see from them. Well, I mean, it, they, they've used the draft well in the past. Guys like Brian White and Ethan, or, uh, Tom Barlow getting them – out of the draft just recently, um, but it's it's kind of a new regime calling the shots here, so uh, anything can happen. What I think what needs to what we need to understand is that I think Gerhard Struber is going to have a lot of say in terms of the type of player he wants. And Gerhard Struber has traditionally liked to play a four four two diamond with super mobile pressing midfielders and obviously two very mobile pressing forwards. So probably thinking about guys who fit that mold. At the same time, um, they did just trade Tim Parker, so they are arguably a little bit thin at center back. Um, you know, Maybe that's a, a spot that they want to address right here. Went and got the Colombian kid that was with Inter-Miami last year uh, from yep. Atletico Nacional, so they have added a little bit of reinforcements there. Maybe that was the first sign that Tim Parker was going to be on the move after uh, window after window of rumors that he was available. The pick is now in. Let's go out to uh, to Harrison and see who the Rebels are going with. Hernandez, and now another shot. Take it here. Fire and score! Score! Duncan cuts it back on his left, and it's in for New York Rebels. Caden Clark with a beauty. Luther Archimede from Syracuse University. All right, a little bit of a project here, but you said it, Charlie. He's got a pedigree. Looks like the Red Bulls think they can get the best out of him. He's He's got the raw athleticism. And then he also understands the game. He understands position coming out of FC show. So this is a player who has a ton of upside and potential. You just have to guide him there. But he has the tools to get there. And so when I look at a player who can cover a lot of ground, he already makes great runs. He's strong. And he has that determination to succeed. This is a is a is a solid choice by Red Bulls, just because they do have Brian White and Tom Barlow. They need some a, a, a different type of option, and he's going to be that guy. Oh, here's the reaction all the way from Guadalupe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To Harrison he goes, trying to impact the first team. Might have opportunities with Red Bulls too, as well. We'll love to hear David Goss's dulcet tones if he's there. Call those uh, goals. Luther Arcomedi with a nice uh, celebration with friends and family. 14th overall. LAFC are now on the clock. But before we keep going with our analysis, a reminder to all those kids out there: the dream can come true, and MLS Next is here to help you do it. There's been many sacrifices I've made on my journey. Spending countless hours at tournaments and practices just to make sure that I can achieve my dream. There's a really thin margin that separates where you are right now and where you want to be. Whatever you do now will set yourself up in your future. As a kid, I knew that that's where I wanted to be someday. You have to work harder than the person next to you to make the first team. It's a matter of who wanted it more. At 13 years old, I joined the Philadelphia Union Academy. This is where I got today. As soon as I started playing for Red Bull Academy, I wanted to one day play for the first team. When I joined the Sounders Academy team, I think that's when I really knew that this was my dream. It was always my dream to become a professional footballer. And I had the privilege to get promoted as a kid by the Vancouver Whitecaps and the MLS. Away, gets away, and at least it's a cannon! Guys, it's up to you. You are next. You're the future. You are the next me. I believe in you. Let's go. Come on! You are the future. You are next. Oh, MLS Next producing some big-time talents. Uh, millions and millions of dollars in transfer fees, as it turns out, from those guys that have made their way through. Go check it out at MLSsoccer.com. We now have 44 seconds, Doyle, till LAFC make their selection at 14 overall. Bob Bradley, known as someone who gets the most out of this draft. Tristan Blackman, we mentioned John Moutinho earlier, might not be with LAFC, but has become a really good player. They have an eye for this. They do, and, and Bob has always had an eye, going all the way back to his Chicago Fire days. He's drafted some of the best players who've ever come into MLS. 
Um, and the, the other thing is, is Bob likes to take raw material and turn it into something even better. He works individually with his players uh, to, to get the best out of them. So whoever gets picked here, it's just about the perfect landing spot. There's going to be pressure because you're in a good system, but there's not too much pressure because you're not expected to carry, uh, carry the team or anything like that. All right, let's find out who is going to LAFC with the 14th overall pick. Out to John Thornton, the president and GM. We go. It's Vela. He's done it again. Crisply struck with style. LAFC selects Daniel Trejo from Cal State University, Northridge. You know, David got said on extra time, look for teams to uh, stay sort of close to home. And we've seen a good bit of that so far. Danny Trejo from Northridge to LAFC, a striker. You look at his history, he scores goals. Charlie, what do you see in the fit here? Uh, it's, a tr it's a great fit for LAFC. You have Rossi, you have Carlos Vela, and... You don't know when those uh, Rossi is going to be sold. And you have brought in Corey Baird, who can also play in the winger position. Up top, you're thin. You lose Bradley Wright Phillips. Danny Mosovsky is there. Also, you know Carlos Vela could play there. But this is another option. And Bob Bradley loves to develop players. You obviously see something in this player, Danny Trejo. So I think for them, this is a project. This is someone who's going to get pushed in training, and they're going to give them time to develop. And whether it's the end of, of this upcoming season or the next, they feel like this is a player that can contribute. And it'll be interesting to see what type of forward he is, because we all know those wingers on LAFC can cut through opposing defenses like a machete. And that was Danny Trejo's job uh, in college. It could He could end up being kind of a winger, but I would expect to see them use him a little bit as sort of a false number nine, almost how Jesus Ferreira played for, uh, for FC Dallas back in 2019. All right, we shall see. A minute 50 to FC Dallas. Congratulations to Danny Trejo staying close to home with LAFC, who are trying to be a little bit more consistent in 2021. We know the uh, upside is there if they can discover – some of that consistency also watching the transfer window with interest. They've got some players that other clubs around the world are going to be very, very interested in. Let's talk FC Dallas. They went out and got their goal-scoring winger. They went and got the left wing as well. They have some young players trying to push through. We're still waiting to see if Paxton Pomichol can stay healthy. Charlie, what can they find in this draft? We have team needs as a left back. There are left backs available. Left back would be a welcomed addition for FC Dallas. And you look at DeRosa, Aiden Stanley, Josh Strack, uh, also Tom Judge. There, there are a number of players who can come in and contribute and challenge. But this is an FC Dallas team, and we know they love their youth. And Ricardo Pepe is a, is a striker who's, who's biting at the chance. Jesus Ferrer didn't have the best of seasons, so you, you look for him to rebound. And, and Paxton Pomacall, we all know the talent that he is, but can he stay healthy this year? Can this be a year of redemption for him? So um, I, I'm really excited about this FC Dallas team. Again, I think a defensive player will, will be in their best interest. We got a center back from Spain uh, this mm -hmm. offseason, quietly under the radar. Hyder O'Brien out of the Colombian League. He was the second leading scorer in that league from the wing, Doyle. In 30 seconds, I know it's difficult. How do they take a step forward this year under Luchi Gonzalez? Everybody has to play better in the attack. You can see that they have their patterns very uh you know, very well down in terms of getting for the back to the front. But once they get to the final third, they don't have those kill patterns. They have a lot of talent there. They got to get them all on the same page and start putting the ball in the net with more regularity. A lot of rumors around this team as it pertains to Brian Reynolds. His development has been very, very rapid as well. But they do have prospects at right back. We'll see if they're going for a left back now. To uh, Texas we go and to Luchi Gonzalez for the 15th overall pick. Here is Ricardo Pepe, and Pepe against the Pumps of in. Saved by Maurer. Now off the volley, oh, what a hit! Welcome to Dallas! I'm going to say Charlie Davis stole my, my, uh, my look today. Hi, this is Jeannie. Can you? We're having trouble with our Zoom when we had to move it. Can you cue us? 
Make your pick. Oh, Nikki Hernandez is the pick. The special moment. Those are going to happen when you're pulling people across the country. Tech issues, tech issues, tech issues. You know what, Lucci? Charlie's not the only one who stole your look. He stole my look as well. I'm still frustrated about that. But Nikki Hernandez from SMU, they'd already signed him to the League One team, to North Texas SC. They are making darn sure, Doyle, that they're not going to lose Nikki Hernandez. Yeah, apparently they like the kid a lot. He's trained with FC Dallas a lot. Uh, he, he played, I think, about a half dozen games for North Texas, uh, almost exclusively as a number eight. He's a guy who get on the ball, uh, does well to move the game around, good feet, um, and a little bit of bite as well. There aren't immediate minutes in that in that FC Dallas central midfield, so he's going to have to work to earn them, but he's been around the team. He already knows that. They already know that. They're probably all pretty comfortable with that. All right, let's stay in Texas. Devin Kerr had a chat with Josh Wolf, the head coach of Austin FC. Already two selections under their belt on this day. Here with Josh Wolf, head coach of the expansion franchise Austin FC. Josh, let's address the elephant in the room. All we heard leading into the draft, Mayaka, 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 you thought differently. You take Danny Prayer at the number one overall pick. Walk us through it. Yeah, I think Danny's a very good player, and he has he has good potential. Um, I think he plays a number of positions in in the midfield, and and, and he's very comfortable in in between lines and spaces when he's under pressure. So, I think we pick up a player that that again has the ability to come in and play in MLS. Um, he also has some room to grow, and and we talked about those things when we interviewed with him. But uh, a very humble, hungry player, and, and, and again, we we like his soccer IQ, his soccer acumen, and uh, a very technical player. And for the way that we want to play. Uh, we, we felt he fit a lot of the needs that we, we're going to expect to that part of the field. Coach, since the modern era in 2009, only four expansion teams have reached the postseason. Seattle, Atlanta, LAFC, and most recently Nashville. What are your goals in 2021 as an expansion franchise? Yeah, to make the playoffs. I think that's, um, that's the starting point. Uh, our ownership, um, our staff, I think we're very committed to, to being competitive. Um, we're, we're, we know we're an expansion team right now. We're, we're building a team, but uh, once we start training, we feel we're going to have a team that can compete, that has great balance, um, domestic interplayers, international interplayers, as well as uh, the right age groups. Uh, we, we want youth, we want experience, and, and we want a very collective team. And um, we, we feel like we've got a, a good build out of the roster so far. We still need to add some pieces, but uh, we want to make the playoffs, and, and we want to be competing straight away. There you go. You heard it here first. Head coach, Austin FC, Josh Wolf, Coach, best of luck this coming season. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Playoffs. That is where everybody wants to be. We will see if Austin FC can get there. We are waiting 30 seconds to go until the LA Galaxy get on the clock. We will uh, show you some of the best reactions around the league in just a bit. But with 25 seconds to go, Doyle, Greg Vanny comes in. Uh, the biggest, uh, the least surprising in the league. This was a surprise, though. Danny Pereira pulling on the hat. Somebody did well to send all this stuff out and make sure these guys had the proper hat and scarf. These are the moments. These are the moments we used to get to see in person. I think there's something special, something, of course, fitting about 2021 to see them in these environments. Charlie, what does this mean to players? What's going through their minds? I know you weren't in the draft, but you understand this moment better than we do. It's the dream where you, you go from playing FIFA as a kid to now being in the game, that you can select yourself in a video game as a professional athlete. It's a magical moment and one that you've always dreamed of and you weren't quite sure, you, you worked towards it, but you weren't. And now it's certified, it's cemented, your family's happy for you, and it's such a, it's such a proud moment for, for everybody. Brett Halsey, he got the uh, turtleneck memo. I just want to tell you, <laughs> out there, Lucci, you're right in between, man. You got the mock turtle, Charlie's got the full turtle, I've got no <laughs> collar, so nobody stole your look. You're, you're still holding strong, still among, if not the best dress coach in MLS. Where do we think uh, the LA Galaxy might go as they take a timeout? Is this a trade move? Is this a, hey, we need a little more time to figure out what's ahead of us? Uh, Greg Vanny and Dennis DeClosa trying to... Uh, th this, is a, this is a moment where they go with best available. And you look at some of the players that have Chicharito up top. Are they bringing Christian Pavone back? Are they bringing uh, some of these players that, that we we hear whispers of, like a uh, one that we all know as the Atomic Ant, Jovinko, has been floated around as, as coming back to MLS. But regardless, you have Dos Jonathan Dos Santos as a six, legit. You have Sasha Kleschen. That could be a, an area where you, you look to bring in another young player, ball-winning central midfielder. And then in the back, 
I mean, they gave up 46 goals last year. So a, a defender is, is not a bad choice as well. So I think you dropped on me. Apologies there. Tell mm-hmm. me what Greg Vanny needs to do off the jump here for the Galaxy to kind of get some traction. Yeah, I, I think that if you watch the way the team played the last couple of years, there there was very little chemistry and uh, very few ideas beyond get it wide and hope Christian Pavone can do something or get it wide and have Rolf Felcher, who has since departed, uh, bang in a 40-yard hopeless cross. So just coming out with actual tactics will be a big step forward uh, for a team that actually does have a lot of talent, but they don't have a lot of depth. Um, and Greg Vanny knows very well, having coached that great Toronto team for a lot of years, that you don't win in MLS with 1 through 11. You need 1 through 25, and the Galaxy don't have that. So building out the, the tail end of the roster, guys sort of like 15 through 25 on the roster, it can start right here. You know, 16 is not a sure thing type uh, of pick, but we've seen guys, like I think Chase Gasper was the 15th pick a couple of years ago. Christian Roldan was the 16th pick. There are guys who can contribute around here if you have a, a coherent system that puts them in positions to succeed. All right, they use the timeout. They have their decision. To LA we go for the 16th pick. Gets that cross towards the backside. The scissor kick towards the goal. Score! Sebastian Lejet! Pavone now trying to get through one defender. Fire! Scores! LA Galaxy picks Josh Dreck from University of Denver. Josh Drack, a left back out of uh, University of Denver. Portland Timbers Academy is his MLS Next affiliated club. He was at Grand Canyon University, then transferred to Denver the 2019 season. Immediate starter, five goals, three assists. Andre Shinashiki is a name that everybody will know out of Denver in recent years. Uh, Charlie, what are they getting in Josh Drack? Uh, a player who's going to come in and look to contribute right away. Left foot, as you can see, he can hit the ball clean. He's a little bit bigger in size. He's not afraid to use his, his body and physical stature and, and He's a guy who wants to cut through the midfield. He's going to try and run at players and create opportunities for others. I think he impressed in the Sporting Kansas City uh, trial for for all these players to kind of go and and show what they're capable of. So this is a player who's looking to come in and contribute right away. All right, here's the reaction from Josh. These are the moments you love to see. (laughs) <laughs> also love to see he's got some personality when it pan comes up, to, pan up. to the hair. Yeah, <laughs> you got the you got the peroxide job in the uh, in the standalone picture, and it looks like the flow is going now for Josh Drack. All torso, baby, all torso. Great tie, Josh. Congratulations. Headed to the LA Galaxy, a new era with Greg Vanny. All right, NYCFC on the clock. They've had a really good history at times in this draft. They traded with the Chicago Fire. To get Josh Harrison, we know how that's worked out. What might they do at 17, Doyle? As you look around at their needs, but also what's available, what makes sense? Well, I think we're all probably a little bit surprised that Josh Bauer is still on the board, uh, big center back. And NYCFC aren't precisely thin on the back line, but they're not exactly overstuffed there either, so I could see them going in that direction. The other area to look is left back. You know, Josh Drax off the board, but... Uh, Matt DeRosa is still on the board. There's a couple other left backs as well who could go right here, and they are really only one deep there. So one, once again, I'm expecting a team to look uh, on the back line here. Charlie, let's talk bigger picture about NYCFC. Who they are, what they're going to be. There's certainly a team in the regular season that's thrown their weight around. It's the playoffs that have been an issue. We've seen a lot of high-profile departures. DP-wise... Where is this team going in your mind? What can they be in 2021? Well, attack-minded with Eber Castellanos, Tajuri Shradi, uh, Jesus Medina, they've always had players who are going to score goals and create and are exciting. And you have Morales in the midfield who's like a little magician, right? He, he, can, he can pick you apart. Given the opportunity, he's going to find that ball, thread the needle, and create, create chances. What I'm surprised about is Alex Ring, you ship him to Austin. You get a big number, but what a talented player. He could play anywhere. He's one of those players that can literally play every position on the field because he's that good. He just has a, a, a soccer IQ higher than, than most. And so what you do believe in is Keaton Parks and James Sands to really be solidify the midfield for you. In the back, Cayennes and Cheneau ha- have been as steady and, and um, dependable as can be in Major League Soccer. 
but left back, Tenderholm, right, right back, who's who's very, very influential in the attack. Left back and, and center back depth is where you need to go if you are Ronnie Dyla. Left back is uh, an issue. Some will have to fill because, of course, they sent Rado Matarita, Costa Rican international, to FC Cincinnati. Some big changes for NYCFC, and there will be a change here. You see on the screen, trade. We are still waiting for details as to what that might mean, but somebody is sneaking their way in for the number 17 overall pick. We've already seen a busy day on the trade front, not huge ones. I now have word in my ear that is the Minnesota United, the Loons, are looking to pick this one up there, uh, I believe now on the clock, for that 17th pick. What might Minnesota be looking for, guys, as we sort of rack our brains, go through the depth charts, and see what's still available? Striker. Yeah, Striker. Yeah. Striker. I mean, the, they have had success, right? Because they, they got Mason Toy with, I think, the eighth or ninth pick a couple of years ago, and he really bailed them out down the stretch in 2019, and they were able to flip him uh, for a good amount of allocation cash. Uh, but right now, they have zero depth at that position. I mean, even if they bring Luis Amaria back, the question is, are you going to get your starting striker with the 17th pick in the first round? I, I'm a little doubtful about that. Um, and the issue with Ed Kiza, would, who is the best striker left on the board, is he would take up an international roster spot for a team that is pretty stuffed with internationals. So it's tough to sort of shoot that gap. Um, they are thin at right wing as well. Maybe someone like Justin McMaster, who didn't have the greatest season coming back from an ACL injury. But before that injury, he was a, easily a top 10 pick. He would help on the right wing. Um, so there are a couple different directions that you could go in. But the one thing we know, Minnesota as much as anybody in the league, they value their draft picks. And Adrian Heath does a good job of, of developing his draft picks. You know, he's turned Gasper and Hassani Dotson into borderline U.S. men's national team players, helped turn Dane St. Clair into a Canadian national team player. Whoever's here is probably going to be very happy about it. We have the pick in. Uh, I'll wait until I have uh, word that it is finalized before we go to that. But I do have the details of this trade here. NYCFC sending this number 17 overall pick to Minnesota, going the other way from Minnesota to New York. 50K in GAM in 2021, plus some conditional GAM if the player selected 25K with this pick. Plays a total of 25 games across 21 and 22 league seasons combined. All right, let's go to Minnesota and the Loons, the number 17 pick. Minnesota United select from Wake Forest University, Justin McMasters. Amos McGee, a Twin Cities legend. It's Justin McMaster here. He's got an interesting story. He left Jamaica to join the Philadelphia Union Academy, went to Wake Forest, and now he is headed to Minnesota. You mentioned that injury, Doyle, but Charlie, what did you see from him before the injury? What did Minnesota see? Well, I, I saw him come back this year as well, so he is back. He's healthy. But Justin McMaster is in the mold of a Kevin Molino. This is a winger who can come inside, combined, he has good technique, can beat people on the dribble, he's creative, and also can finish. So there's the upside for Justin McMaster is huge. I really like what I've seen from him. He's aggressive, he's confident, and that's what you get when you, when you acquire a winger like Justin McMaster. You know how I felt about that Kevin Molino move. I was hoping <laughs> he would stay in Minnesota, but yes, sir, Justin McMaster, up and down, up and down, give some hugs, get the selfies in. This is a great, great moment in a young man's life. A lot of work to do now in the Twin Cities. The scarf is handy, it's there. Minnesota United is the destination for Justin McMaster, who played a couple years in that Philadelphia Union Academy. He said uh, not getting signed was very difficult, but now he's got an opportunity to prove the Union wrong. Toronto FC now on the clock, about two minutes until, until their selection. Uh, reminder that we did have Chris Armis on extra time. Yes, I've been plugging the show an awful lot, uh, but it is uh, certainly, I think, a must-listen for MLS fans out there. What are Toronto going to be looking for here? But maybe more importantly, Doyle, where are they going with Chris Armis now at the helm? Well, they hope they're going back to MLS Cup. Um, you know, this is a team whose window of contention is right now because if you look at their best players – uh, you know, guys like, like Josie and even Alejandro Pozuelo are in their 30s now or just about there. Uh, Michael Bradley is probably 
uh, you know, a little bit past his prime and you're hoping for one more good season. Same with Omar Gonzalez. Uh, so whoever they're picking right here, um, they're not picking him to save the day. They're picking him to maybe soak up some minutes at, at, a, at a crucial spot and keep the starters healthy so that this team, which has accomplished so much over the past seven years under Greg Vanny, has one more playoff run in them. Um, and just looking at their depth chart, the most obvious glaring need is left back. They don't have a left-footed left back on the roster right now unless they bring Justin Morrow back. And even then, Justin Morrow is not going to be able to go play 3,000 minutes this season. So you would expect a, a DeRosa uh, or, or you know maybe an Aiden Stanley right here. The twins, the DeRosa twins, Matt and Ben. You got a left back, you got a right back, both at Maryland, both basically playing the same number of games every year all the way up. Such a cool story. I will love to see uh, when one of those two and perhaps both get drafted. They had their pre-interview surveys. They said, who's the most important person in your life? They both said each other. Oh, That's the twin stuff. I have I twins. Love it. So I love that's it. Nice. Family <laughs> here waiting for this moment. I'm sure it will come for them. We'll see what Toronto FC do. Uh, Charlie, this is a, a kind of, not, I'm not going to make or break for Toronto, but they have a core of experienced, older players who have won before, but really they need to win again. 2021, Pozuelo, Josie. How do they get the most out of those guys, in particular Josie Altador? Well, for Josie Altador, it's just staying healthy. That's it. And with that World Cup on the uh, on the horizon, I think that's the added motivation to keep him healthy, keep him involved in the U.S. Men, men's national team setup. And if you have him healthy with Iowa Canola and Pozuelo, then everything else kind of falls into place. You have Pozuelo, Delgado, Bradley. You have options. Subata Enzo, De Leon. So I think for Toronto FC, you need to focus defensively. Chris Mavinga and Omar Gonzalez, sometimes they look great. Other times they looked all over the place and the chemistry wasn't there. I think Omar Gonzalez is a player who's who's getting to the to the to the the latter part of his career and you need someone <laughs> to come in and give him time to take a couple games off. You know, have those breaks. I think you need a defensive re- uh, player who's going to come in and, and give you depth. We got a timeout here for Toronto FC as they try to figure out where they'll go, which means we're going straight back to the Twins. If they want that left back, Doyle, yes. Matt DeRosa is at the <laughs> top of your board. I just I sit here and I wonder what it would be like on this day, brothers <laughs> coming together to see where you'll spend the next couple years of your career, to see where it'll begin, at least. It would be the third set of Twins in Major League Soccer. You're seeing the Nyasi brothers. Yes, sir. Started out with uh, New England. Farfans. Uh-huh. Yeah. Keep it going. And somehow I'm missing that third set of twins in my mind. But they would the be the third. The DeRosas. Yeah, the DeRosas would be the third. Work out. Yeah, look, I was, yeah. you know, I was, I was cycling through everything. <laughs> so it would be an awesome moment for them and their family. You love to see the smiles in that room. Chris Armas, uh, let's get back to him a little bit because he has something to prove. He showed us that when he came on Extra Time. What can he prove this year, Doyle? Well, he could prove that that he got kind of a raw deal in New York. And, and um, while I understood the decision they made to, to move on from him, uh, he didn't seem like he's over it. And so anybody who has that kind of chip on his shoulder, and we all know what a great competitor Chris Armas is, uh, is going to feel like they want to show their old team what's up. And <laughs> in Toronto, they have the reigning MVP. They have in Josie Altador and Io Akinola, a, you know, a forward partnership that uh, could be one of the best in the league. They have been one of the best teams in the league for the past five years. He wants to show that everything that happened in 2017 under Greg Vanny, that can happen again under Chris Armas. Um, I, I'm not going to bet on that, um, but that's why they play the games. Charlie, we have 30 seconds to Toronto mm-hmm. here. If you are them, can you get a player that can impact your team in 2021? Or are you looking for somebody probably that's uh, maybe further down the depth chart? What do you think is available to them? Well, for me, it's center back. Josh Bauer is a player who stands out to me, who's going to come in and challenge. He's he's tough defensively. And for Toronto FC, you need someone who's just going to get stuck in, who's going to put their body on the line to prevent, to, to make sure you have – a shutout to ensure a, a goalless game. That that is what you get in Josh Bauer. Defensively strong uh, presence on set pieces. You you also have a player um, in the name of uh, Rio Gundhope from Georgetown. I think that's another player who's athletic, covers a lot of ground. 
um, it can fit into a, diff- a number of different positions along the back line. Well, I got to interrupt you, Charlie, because you see that in the bottom corner. There is a trade. I, I have the it. details for you. Here come Go the loons. loons. The loons at the back half of the first round. They're cleaning up. They, they're uh, <laughs> chipping the 25th pick, which they held at the end of the first round, to Toronto, as well as 50K in allocation money for this 18th pick. So they're moving back up. We are still waiting for that pick, but they just used the 17th on Justin McMaster. They must be looking around saying the guys that we were targeting that we wanted are still available and the price is absolutely Mm -hmm. right for us. They're flipping. They're sticking with uh, multiple picks here in this first round. Where might they go? Are we going back to the back line? Maybe a little bit of depth to cover for uh, Ike and see what what might happen with him? So they... They have four center backs on the excuse me, five center backs on the roster. Um, so I don't, and they used last year's first round pick on a center back, and then they just traded for Kyle Montgomery, who was a high pick a couple of years ago for her FC Dallas. So I don't think they're going to center back. I think they might go to left back because Chase Gasper is the only real left back on the roster. He basically had to play every minute the last couple of years. And there, as we just said, there are a couple good left backs to pick from. Well, it might not be a great moment for you here, Matt, if what's being said in my ear is correct. We are going back to the Twin Cities for the 18th pick. Minnesota United selects from University of California, Davis, Nabilai Kibanguchi. Nabi Kibanguchi, standout center back, also plays some number six. There's some questions about maybe where he's best. I had somebody close to that program tell me he's a little bit like Rico Clark in a lot of ways. Good on the ball, aggressive, very physical. What are they getting in this pick? Why'd they move up for him, Charlie? Well, you, you just said it, Rico Clark. One of the the best defensive midfielders I've played with. Just good range, tough tackler, reads the game well, and someone you don't want to go up against 1v1 because if you do get by him, he's going to get a piece of you and he's going to take you down, or he's just going to take take a, take the ball and also take a piece of your leg. So this is a player that you want. You're confident as a center back if he does slip into that position that he can build out of the back. He's, he's good on the ball, but if he does play in the sixth role, he'll cover ground. He'll be a good complement to a young Grey Goose, even to a Will Trapp or a Hassani Dotson. So it's a great pick for Minnesota, a, a good added uh, depth piece for this team. Looking good in that baby blue. Hugs all around for Nabi. Kibben Gucci and his family. He's going to a team that might need some depth at that sixth spot, Doyle. You don't know mm-hmm. what's going to happen with Ozzy Alonso. The fact that he can play both, I mean, that, that's got to be attractive to Minnesota, and that's why they make the pick. Yeah, it gives them some cover and some flexibility, and uh, yeah, he's a little bit older. So it's, it's kind of like Chase Gasper asking that Gasper was about a year older than most of the other guys who went in that draft, and maybe that maturity physically and, and mentally allowed him to have a quicker transition to MLS. We could see maybe something similar happen here. Um, and Kevin Gucci is He's good, man. He's been a you know on the fringes of the U.S. Youth National Team rosters. I think he was part of a U19 camp a couple of years ago. Um, so there's talent here, and as I said, Minnesota United they developed their draft picks. So he's got to be thrilled right now. All right, let's talk about some changes. And we saw Atlanta trade away their pick at five, but some changes for the five stripes this off season as we await Orlando City on the clock at 1:23 and counting. Uh, Carlos Bocanegra, Darren Eels. Now, Gabriel Heinze, what does that say to you guys about where Atlanta's going? But first, actually, let's get to the interview with Carlos Bocanegra. Joining us now, Vice President and Technical Director of Atlanta United, Carlos Bocanegra. Carlos, let's just start here. New season, new coach. Joseph Martinez is back up top. How do you get back to the winning ways of 2018 and 2019? Yeah, for us, everything is about looking forward. Uh, like you mentioned, we've got a new coach coming in, uh, Joseph coming back to health. Uh, players are very eager to prove um, last season was just a blip on the radar. We're excited to play, play in front of our fans again in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So everything about this uh, this club is looking forward and to the future, and it starts this year. Coach, you traded out of the first round with D.C. United. I'm going to remove the specifics of the trade. You did still bring in some young attacking talent out of Wake Forest and Machop Chol. 
decided to homegrown him. Just walk me through that process and what sort of impact does he have in the coming season? Yeah, so Chuck, we figured would have been a top 15 pick in this year's draft. Um, but now it's just showing our academy um, is able to produce players that come through the college system or they come straight to a homegrown route. Uh, and it's fantastic for us. He's had a great career. We get to bring him in. Uh, you know, we've got Bryce Washington here at Pitt. You know, George Campbell coming through. Efrain Morales coming through the academy. Uh, George Bello played for us last season and kind of broke through. So um, that's been pretty good for us to, to see. And, and really, you know, how the academy is able to produce and help, uh, whether they come through college or straight to the pro ranks. We know you take pride in that young talent, and we look forward to seeing them put on the five stripes come the 2021 season. Best of luck. Thank you. The MLS Cup is a flex in the background. Atlanta United trying to get back to those heights. Last year, Orlando City surpassed them, and the pick is in for them at 19. Back to Central Florida we go. Orlando Select, defender from Georgetown, Rio Hope Gund. Rio Hope Gund is a selection for Orlando. Doyle, tell, uh, tell the folks at home what they're getting. Yeah, he's a no-frill center back who can, um, I, I think, just walk in and do the job physically. And, and that's the first box that you want to check when you're making, you know, taking a flyer on a guy near the end of the first round. He will be able to compete. He, uh, he also played for a, a program in Georgetown that had a ton of success. So there, there's a certain level of, of lineage right there that, uh, you know, obviously caught Orlando City's eye. He's not walking in here to be a starter, uh, but this does give them depth. They, they're now five deep at center back, um, and they could probably sleep easy with that. Charlie, let's talk more about the first team and what they hope to accomplish after what was really a renaissance year under Oscar Pereja. What can 2021 be? There was such a huge step forward for Orlando City, though maybe not the silverware that they might have wanted to get out of it, but there's another chance to do that in 2021. Well, silverware. This is a team that feels they're ready to compete for silverware. Uh, you, you have to give a ton of credit to Oscar Perea and what he's been able to do since coming through the door at Orlando City. Uh, starts with the goalkeeper in the back, Galese. He's been phenomenal for this team. He breathes confidence. And Antonio Carlos, another piece. You go up the spine, Junior Urso. And then he's also had Perea now developed into a player who's, who's ready for the next uh, step in his career. Chris Mueller, what he's developed into as the right wing. You got Nani buying into the, the system, getting the best out of his players. And we all know the, the moments of magic he can create. And then Daryl DK, the development of Daryl DK. So this team, you throw in Moutinho, you throw in Juan, they can compete at the highest level. They can win a championship. It's getting all of them to be on the same page and everyone's healthy. And we, we could see this Orlando City team take the next step in their progression, which is winning a, winning a trophy. Rio Hope Gund going to Orlando City. We've got about a minute 10 till Nashville make their selection. We've talked or mentioned, I should say, Alistair Johnson a number of times in this show. Is there another player in here that they could go get? Doyle, we've seen Mike Jacobs and crew trade for draft picks. Go out and, yeah. and move pieces. They picked up basically the union's entire haul over this year and next. They clearly value this, and Mike has a long history in the college game. What might they do here? Uh, just looking at their depth chart, they are a little thin now in central midfield after having traded away uh, Derek Jones. And the fact that they've also traded away a number of international roster slots suggests that they think that they have the inside track on an American central midfielder or domestic central midfielder, if it's a Canadian, um, to, to come in and, and maybe soak up those minutes. Uh, they could also use maybe a little bit more depth at center back. I know Romney and Zimmerman were excellent last year, but Zimmerman's going to miss time with the national team. Uh, so there are a number of different ways. It's similar to Minnesota, though. That whoever gets picked here is going to have a very good shot at playing some minutes. All right, let's see who uh, Mike Jacobs is going to pull out of his hat. It is the 20th overall pick. Let's hear it. With the 20th pick, Nashville SC selects 
Ericose Deniciano from the University of Virginia. Oh, you got to love the backdrop in Nashville. Ericose Donaciano out of Virginia. Good pedigree there, of course. What do we think about this one, Charlie, in particular where he translates at the pro level? Well, this is one of the most intriguing players for me in the MLS Super Draft because of his, his versatility. He could play in a defensive midfielder type of role or a number eight. He can play as a winger. This player has a lot of skill sets. And, and when I watch him, uh, he goes by Cozy in college. This is a player who I've seen shoot from distance. He can combine. He can beat players on the dribble. He has that electric pace and quickness. But he's also composed. He can be a tough tackler. There are a number of positions he can excel in. And looking at Nashville, I think he's going to be a tremendous asset for this club. Got to imagine Mike Jacobs saw something that uh, that he really likes there. They've done pretty well in this draft recently. Nashville, for you, though, Doyle, they've got a, a tough got a tough path this year, I think, to take a step mm -hmm. forward, to try to be better than they were last year in what was really a banner expansion season. How does that step forward happen? Well, the way they played in October and then November into the playoffs um, was really encouraging. They became a more dimensional team. They were actually able to use the ball and be uh, a little bit more attacking via possession. And I think being able to do that out of the gate in 2021 would be the step forward that they need. Um, whether Donaciano helps with that right away, I don't know, but I do know that he can give them depth at a number of spots. And, and for a team that's just trying to keep their best players fresh for the biggest games, uh, it seems like a smart pick to me. All right, let's do a little recap here as we wait for the Colorado Rapids to make their second selection of the first round. Of course, they had the third overall, which they used on Philip Mayaka. One through 20 so far. Some surprises. Some misses, five of, se of the first seven picks. Generation Adidas classes, those misses on our part, I should say. Danny Pereira going first overall out of Virginia Tech to Austin FC. A lot of people really high on him, and he gets uh, that due with the number one pick there. Calvin Harris, Philip Mayaka, all three that originally, uh, original Generation Adidas class. Kamarni Smith, the second player in a row out of Clemson. Then you have Michael DeShields pushing into the five spot. DC United picked that one up from Atlanta United. Ethan Bartlow, a GA player. Brett Halsey finishing out the GA class. Derek Dotson, David Egbo, and Josh Penn. Uh, here is 11 through 20. As you think about this draft so far, guys, what stands out to you? What are sort of the, the big picture takeaways? Doyle, we'll start with you. Uh, I think I have to go back to the top three because I, I, I just didn't expect it to work out the way it did. And I, I think that that's number one. And number two is that a lot of internationals went higher in this draft than we've seen from recent super drafts. And it just, to me, that's an indication of the way MLS GMs and sporting directors are thinking about the, the talent coming out of college. They see guys who can contribute. You wouldn't spend an international roster slot on a guy who you didn't think could give you minutes. Hey, look well, at I'll that. Throw, as we're uh, talking, hold on. I got I to gotta jump in on you because as we're talking, I don't know if you noticed on the screen here, Charlie, a trade flashed, and now Colorado Rapids, no, no, no. Austin FC moving wow. up for what would be their third pick of the first round of the Super Draft 2021 presented by Adidas. Number one overall, they took Danny Pereira out of Virginia Tech. And then at the 11th spot, they went and got Freddie Kleeman out of Washington, a big center back for depth on that back line. Where might they be going now, Charlie? What do you think? Central midfield, again, maybe. Uh, I, or, or up top, actually. I'm going to go with striker. They, they need a, another nine. Um, they need an added, added presence up there. You have, you have Hussein, Danny Hussein, who's up there. You can, you, can, you can throw in Dominguez. You can throw in Gallagher. But they need a true nine um, to, to add some depth to that position. Okay, we can go out to Austin now for the 21st pick. Let's send it out to Claudio Reyna. With the 21st pick, Austin FC selects Aiden Stanley from Duke University. Mm. Aiden Stanley from Duke. St. Louis FC is his MLS next connection. He also, just days ago, signed with Sporting KC2, but now Austin have his MLS rights. 
Uh, left back, Doyle, what do you make of this one? It's interesting in a couple different ways. Yeah, I mean, it's just an obvious fit looking at their roster. Uh, they're too deep almost everywhere uh, except left back. And the only left-footed left back that they have on the roster is Ben Sweat, who is, a, I think, a borderline MLS starter. So if Aiden Stanley comes in here and, and you know, impresses, again, I'll go back to the, the Chase Gasper well. If he could do what Chase Gasper did a couple of years ago, uh, there is maybe a starting job to be had. Um, but at the very least, if you're Austin, getting a left back who has some pro experience, was a well-regarded youth player, um, like the, these guys don't grow on trees and, and this is exactly what you should do with a pick in the early twenties is, is try to take someone who can maybe plug, you know, fill a need for a thousand or 1500 minutes a year. This is an interesting year, both for the super draft. And we talked about the ability to scout the combine that sporting Kansas city held and sort of the challenges therein. But it's also an interesting year because some of these players uh, may choose to go back to college, depending on where they're drafted. So we'll have to see how all that plays out, and certainly we'll have to see how this contract that Aiden Stanley signed with Sporting KC2 will play out. But Austin FC will have the first crack in Major League Soccer at taking a look at the Duke product, seeing if he fits in, and then signing him to their first team. Three selections, as I said now, for Austin. Danny Pereira first overall at 11. Freddie Kleeman out of Washington, a center back. And now in that 21st spot, Aiden Stanley, a left back. A busy day for the expansion side. Austin FC. Orlando City, back up on the clock, 22nd overall. We'll see if that little trade sign flashes because it seems like teams <laughs> are starting to see opportunity to make moves uh, as things happen here. We've talked about the team needs. We've talked about the center back. Let's talk about uh, the young stars that they've picked up in the Super Draft in recent years. You look at Chris Mueller and Daryl DK in particular, Doyle. Those were big swings and big connections and now are really big parts of what their future looks like. Yeah, I mean, they are huge parts of their future. And we, we saw that, I mean, the future came real fast last year. Uh, I think a year before, uh, most people thought Oscar Pereja would be able to turn it around. But that's what Oscar Pereja does. He, he gets the best out of younger players. Um, this team has drafted really, really well, going back all the way to Kyle Laren. Uh, let's not forget they also picked Julian Gressel and then um, probably shouldn't have traded that guy. So they have a very good history, but it's very different picking in the top five versus picking somewhere in the 20s. At this point, you're just hoping you can get somebody who could make the team. Um, maybe Josh Bauer, who has dropped, though, uh, I doubt that after picking Rio Hope Gund, they'll go for another center back. Um, maybe another left back, you know, DeRosa is still on the raw or still on the board at this point. So we'll see. All right. They have two picks so far. Derek Dodson at eight. They picked that one up from Portland. And then you just said it. Rio Hope Gund was just selected with the 19th. Here is the 22nd pick from Orlando. Nanny causing the consternation and taking their claim. Benjamin Michel, oh, what a touch. Benji's in. Oh, he scores. The shot is there. Can you believe that? Orlando City selects defender from Penn State University, Brandon Hackenberg. Brandon Hackenberg out of Penn State, trading the Navy <laughs> for purple. Charlie, what are they getting in Hackenberg? As you can see, a player who, who's going to be dominant in the air and get on the end of set pieces. Someone who's comfortable playing 1v1 is not an issue for him. He's athletic, he's strong, good presence. And, and that's needed when you, when you talk about depth for this Orlando City team. Orlando City, three picks now in the first round of the MLS Super Draft 2021 presented by Adidas. Congratulations to Brandon Hackenberg. To Orlando City he goes. As we wait for the Vancouver Whitecaps to make their pick, they have about two minutes and 40 seconds to go. Let's dig just a little bit farther in. And Doyle, it surprised me a little bit in speaking to you and looking at the depth chart and sort of considering where the Whitecaps are, that in large part their roster feels pretty steady. That's interesting to me uh, from the mm -hmm. perspective of their results because they have not been a team that's been in the playoffs that have been really rebuilding in a lot of ways. What is the state of the Whitecaps right now and what should they be thinking about and shooting for in 2021? They should be shooting for a DP number 10. They have a roster that um, is pretty complete, and as you know, as we can all see, they need that one difference maker. If they can get that guy, I think that can change a lot of things for Vancouver. All right, let's talk uh, about Greg Vanny in LA Galaxy. Nobody better to lay through that than Greg Vanny himself. He spoke with Devin Kerr. 
here with the new head coach from the Los Angeles Galaxy FC, Greg Vanny. Greg, let's start here. People have only ever known you, and you've only ever known Toronto FC as a head coach. Now that you've transitioned to the Los Angeles Galaxy, what's your message to fans? What's going to be different? Well, uh, things will be different in L.A. from what they were used to uh, in previous few years. Um, you know, for us, uh, things won't change for me too much. I have a vision of the game and what I want to see from our teams. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to have the ball. We're going to create opportunities. Uh, we want to be proactive in the game. Uh, and so right now it's about building that, uh, building a team that can play that way. It's about building for to be uh, competitive and try to win championships immediately, but also about building stability in this team. And that's what the draft is about is not just looking short term, but it's looking longer term into uh, into years to come. Let's talk about the build. Uh, you draft Josh Drack at the University of Denver, number 16 overall. But coming to the Galaxy, you've also acquired a pretty impressive, we'll say, youth academy that has pushed players up through homegrown sightings. It's a little bit different than Toronto. How do you continue to take that, push it to another level, and how does that make an impact on your roster in the near future? Yeah, I think it's a, a, a very, very important component of building out uh, a club that can be beneficial and take the most, make the most out of a budget uh, budget situation in terms of a cap. And so for us, when we look at the, the academy, we're looking at the projection of each of these players that's coming through. We just announced the signing of three players here over the last three days that we're excited about. We have some nice young talent that's already in the team. Uh, but we look at this draft also as a way to supplement that. And so, you know, one of the spots that we don't have a lot of depth yet and the in the coming through the academy part and, and looking a little bit more long term is at left back, which is where a player like Josh Drack really makes sense for us uh, in the short term, but also in the long term. And so uh, we're excited to add him in. But having the, the academy as a piece that can really fill in the roster for your for your first team is important. Appreciate your time, coach. Best of luck in 2021. All right. Thank you. Really looking forward to seeing that LA Galaxy Academy start to produce what we've all thought it could produce from the very, very start. We have five picks remaining in the first round of the MLS Super Draft 2021 presented by Adidas. And then we will send it off to you to uh, watch the second and third rounds via the Super Draft Tracker at MLSsoccer.com and on the MLS app. Vancouver now on the clock at 23, and the pick is in. So let's see what's going down in British Columbia. Vancouver Whitecaps FC select Javain Brown from the University of South Florida. Another one of those guys that had signed a contract down in USL, but here he goes to the Whitecaps. Uh, Doyle, what is uh, what is uh, Brown's spot as it pertains to the Whitecaps? Well, I mean, that's a, that's a really good question um, because he's kind of a tweener. He, he played uh, some right back and some center back. Yeah, I think he played a little bit of uh, right midfield as well uh, but he's a guy who you know made a difference for a good team USF has put a lot of pros into the league over the past decade um, and it looks like Vancouver are betting upon that all right we'll see how that one works out we're now to the 24th overall pick two minutes 30 seconds and counting for the revs Charlie you had to wait all this time, man. Now we're finally here. What might the Revs be thinking in this position? But more importantly, I think, what are the Revs thinking overall about what happened in 2020 and what's going to happen in 2021? Well, they also have proven that they are a, a team that's going to challenge for a trophy. And when you look at what Carlos Hill has done for this team, the transformation when he's on the field, they brought in uh, Captum in the midfield. They brought also brought in Christian Mafla at left back. So they already have addressed positions of need to get them into the conversation of challenging for an MLS Cup. I think right now they need depth at center back. You have Henry Kessler, who had a standout season, but then you have Andrew Farrell, and there's no one really underneath or pushing them for minutes. So I think you have to go center back, and lo and behold, New England, <laughs> Josh Bauer, New Hampshire, he's fallen this low. I think he's in the mold of a Dave Romney, and, and I know that Kurt Anolfo loved what Dave Romney uh, was able to do for LA Galaxy. He kind of groomed him. So that's a position that makes sense to me right now at this pick. Josh yeah, Bauer, guy who thrived in college. Yeah. He was yeah, with I the refs argue, too. I can't argue with any of that, right? Because it, every mock draft, every big board I saw out there had him in the top 10. And it is uh, 
kind of so it's shocking that he's fallen this far. It reminds me of Brandon Aubrey a little bit uh, a couple years back, the big defender from Notre Dame who, who was mocked as a top 10 pick and didn't get called till I think around 20 or 25 for Toronto. Um, but it, I agree with every word Charlie said, man. It's just looking at the Revs' depth chart, they only have three center backs. Um, one of them is Andrew Farrell, who's a converted right back. It it doesn't feel like they should overcomplicate this one. They know him, as I said, with Revs too. Before he went and signed with Birmingham Legion, played three games for them last year. Well, who's at the boss of the Legion? Uh, that's Jay Heaps, who's the coach. Is Tommy Soen. I mean, you have a lot of connections that bring <laughs> Josh Bauer and the Revs together. We will mm-hmm. see if those connections prove true. Now, you saw a little bit of how the sausage is made there. You saw all the hats and all the scarves. If you are the Bauer clan, you are sitting right now on pins and needles, and you're looking dead at that Rev scarf and hat, and you're saying, that is where we want to go. Uh, New here. Hampshire. Come on, let's now, go. With this 24th One time pick, for New Hampshire. In New England. I know that's what you're rooting for, Charlie. Uh, Josh Bauer could be the pick. If he's not the pick, we know that they've really focused on the back line in the past. Could it be mm-hmm. elsewhere, Charlie, or is this really a center back play for them? They have so much depth everywhere. I, I can't imagine them going outside of, of the center back position. We do have a timeout here, which is an interesting wrinkle wow. from the Rev. Hey, so wow. I gotta put you gotta put Josh Bauer on and family on pins and needles, don't you? Yeah. We'll see what happens here. I don't want to overplay that one and then look silly as we have a couple times on the back end. Uh, we have four picks remaining here. The UNH product and family waiting to see what happens during this timeout. Charlie, uh, tell me about the Revs and their draft strategy, let's say, in the past couple years. Because mm-hmm. when you look at their team, it all seems from Super Draft to be focused in one area, and it has really paid off for them. Well, you just look at Tejan Buchanan. What a star he's turned into. Now he's with the Canadian full men's national team. Brandon By has been a lockdown right back, although he was supplanted by Dewan Jones, who was initially an attacking player in college, but made the transition to right back, and he has also played left back. So that's a player who's very versatile, and you know he has a high ceiling as well in in, in an outside back position, preferably on the right because he is right-footed. So I love what the New England Revolution have done as far as de- developing talent and believing believing in their their youth system. Justin Renex was another homegrown sign from Indiana a couple of year ago years ago with the U.S. Under 20 uh, youth national team. So. I really like their depth. They have Tico Rivera, Gustavo Bo, Carlos Hill, Adam Books up top. You have Teal Bunbury. Uh, you have Boateng, Emma Boateng, who was just signed. You brought in A.J. De La Garza. Uh, they have uh, brought in a, a strong core of players. Wilfred Captoum is probably the they're, highlighted player. Hey, yeah, that's the I, depth I'm, chart, man. You just walked everybody through it. Yeah, Let's yeah, find out who's going to be I, added I gave you everything you need. The pick you need, is in, You need a Charlie. center back. You Let's need go to your back. neck of the woods, man. Who are the Revs taking at 24? Back to Gustavo Bo. Gustavo Bo! And a Bursa scores. Space for Gustavo Bo! Winning goal! With the 24th pick, the New England Revolution select Edward Kiza forward from Pittsburgh. All right, goal poacher out of Pittsburgh. This season was a little bit strange. He was dismissed from the program. But the two seasons before that, Charlie, he was the real deal. He, he's a finisher. He, he makes great runs, intelligent runs in the box. Not really going to be built uh, in, in the build-up play. But that's not what you need when you have a Carlos Hill and a Gustavo Bo. You need someone who's just going to get in the box and finish. They get that with Edward Kiza. I'm a little surprised just because he, he's an international. So you take up an international spot in, in having uh, Edward Kiza, but... This is a quality striker and someone who is going to push uh, for minutes because of his his quality in front of goal. How's he fit in in that depth chart right now, Doyle? The way that you see it. So oh, just just looking at it, it's you know Adam Buxa is a true center forward, but then behind him you have Teal, who has played center forward a lot, but is more of a winger these days. You have Justin Runix, who not really a center forward, not really a winger, kind of a hybrid, and same with Gustavo Bo. So there is an obvious need, I think, for a fox in the box type of second forward. Keyes has got the opportunity to go into camp and maybe win this job uh, and show that the poaching skills that were frankly dominant in the ACC can translate up to MLS. All right, we will see. Josh Bauer is still waiting. He is uh, on your big board, 
Doyle, he was the number two overall center back. We've seen uh, three or four taken around him. Uh, I believe five off the board. If my count is right right now, feel free to correct me. Uh, but Josh Bauer still waiting to hear his name called. Three rounds, of course, five additional picks at the end, make it 86 on this day, just the start for all these players. We have three picks remaining. Toronto, of course, picking up this selection in that trade with Minnesota that netted Minnesota, the 18th overall pick. We'll see where they go um, before this. Uh, what are we thinking uh, as, as far as uh, as far as Toronto goes right now? Is this a uh, a trade moment? Is this a different moment? Is there somebody that they're targeting? I, I mean, I, I think they're very happy with the fact that they got fifty thousand worth of allocation money to trade down seven spots, um, and that indicates to me that they were comfortable taking whoever was the best available talent left at the end of the first round here. I do think, again, you know, and we talked about this, left back is a clear area of need. I, I think center back can maybe be reinforced a little bit as well. If you look at the rest of the roster, they're like two or three deep almost everywhere else. And I know that Toronto fans in particular don't ever want to see another Aro or Larea game at left back again. So I know a couple of them who are hoping for a left back here, but um, well, I guess we're about to see, aren't we? All right, well, before we get to Toronto's pick, uh, actually, Toronto's pick is in. So the pick is in for Toronto FC. We will get you to a Brett Halsey interview in just one second. Let's see who the Reds went with. Toronto FC selects Matt DeRosa, Maryland. Matt DeRosa, the first of the Twins, off the board. You can see that left foot, left-sided right there. He was the top left back on your depth chart, Doyle. This is uh, what we thought they might do with that previous pick. They managed to trade down and get it done. Yeah, and he, I think he's someone that would have been a good pick as high as number 10, uh, just because he... He has the, the makeup of a guy who's skilled enough and athletic enough to actually make it in the league and stick around and give good minutes. Uh, there's been some comparisons to John Nelson, who went pretty high to FC Dallas a couple years ago. I don't. I think he's a little more attacking than Nelson was, um, and I think he's got a shot to stick with the, this Toronto team. Uh, I believe that is uh, that is Matt in the blue jacket, his brother Ben, giving him congratulations. The family, of course, delighted for Matt DeRosa, headed to Toronto, see if he can get into the team at left back. Uh, we'll see when his brother Ben may get taken. Both these uh, twins finding a destination on this day in Major League Soccer. All right, let's get to that Brett Halsey interview. He chatted with Devin Kerr. He was a seventh pick to RSL. Real Salt Lake took none other than Brett Halsey, University of Virginia Cavalier at the number seven overall pick. Brett, let's start here. Um, labels, outside back, winger, holding midfielder. Uh, apparently you're a magician on the side too. Well, what exactly are we going to do when you come into the professional ranks? Yeah, I feel like I can play uh, a ton of different positions. I think versatility is one of my strongest attributes. I'm ready to do whatever it takes, play anywhere to get on the field. I got to read you this one because this came to me right before we came on in the interview. Make sure you ask Brett about looking like The Rock with a picture that's made its way around the internet. Are we aware of this? I, I, um, I'm not aware of it at the moment, but um, I guess now I am. I haven't here, seen it yet. Here it comes. I think you got to jump on social media. More importantly, man, go enjoy your family. Congratulations. Have some fun. I will. Thank you. Uh, the banter coming through, but uh, Brett Halsey... Didn't really understand. Could have gone with. Yeah, it wasn't up for it, was he? <laughs> yeah, he was like, I'm not sure what you, what's going on here right now. But he heads to Real Salt Lake with the seventh pick. Congratulations to him. We have two picks remaining here. Miami are on the clock right now. They went and got Josh Penn with that first selection at number ten. What might they do here? Is it, is it a center back play? I mean, is this is this Josh Bauer's moment? Is he headed to uh, for some sunshine after? You know, I'm not going to say New England is drab, Charlie. I'm just going to say that maybe <laughs> Miami's a little bit more glamorous. You know what? I'm not even going to entertain that conversation because I was I was just let down. I was let down uh, with, with, with that just because I thought this was the moment he was going to have to get to play for his hometown club. But, you know, for Inter-Miami, again, it's defensive recruitments. You need enforcement. And goalkeeper and center back, outside back, 
those are areas of need. So I hope this time they get a player that, that really uh, fits the, the team need. Uh, the pick is in, according to our screen. I have not yet heard the official confirmation in my ear, so I will wait for that to come. Doyle, what do you make of my thought that this is now, quote-unquote, David Beckham's team, that he said, you know what, I need to be more hands-on? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of undeniable at this point. If you look at what he's done this offseason, the way they've rebuilt not just uh, the team but the front office and then getting one of his, you know, dear friends – They've been, you know, Phil Neville and, and David Beckham go back about three decades at this point, uh, getting him to be the, the head coach. That's uh, a pretty solid stamp on the 2021 version of Inter-Miami. All right, let's see who the pick is in the 26th position in the 2021 Super Draft. To Chris Henderson, we go. Pizarro Golazo! Inter Miami selects Ame Mabika from the University of Kentucky. Ame Mabika, he is not lacking in one thing, and that is size. You can see him absolutely dwarf everybody else on the field. 6'6", Charlie. He uh, moved to Lexington, Kentucky. He stayed there for college, has a huge connection with the university. They're going to be rooting him on now in Miami. What did Miami get with this selection? A physical presence in the back. And this is what they needed. Somebody who is athletic, he's big. And and I think this is going to be a, a su successful pick. I, I do believe that this kid has a high ceiling. He's going to fit in uh, nicely next to an LGP. And someone who's going to get pushed. And I think this is a good spot for, for Inter-Miami with that selection. What do you make of this one, Doyle? I did a lot of research. He's got a great story. He's got a good pedigree. But there are some questions about whether or not it's going to all translate. I mean, there's always questions with guys picked just about anywhere in the draft. Um, but the, the point that Charlie kept hammering home, and it's a good one, is that uh, Inter-Miami need a ton of help on that back line. LGP didn't look like the best 11 version of LGP. Uh, Nico Figal struggled mightily at center back and uh, was probably more effective at, at right back. And then behind them, there's almost nothing on this depth chart. So if Mabika you know, comes to camp fit, shows that he's technical enough to play, um, shows that he can be dominant in the air. Uh, he will have a chance to, to earn some minutes, at, or at the very least, to earn a roster slot, which is not a given when you're picked 26th overall. It's taken us more than two hours to really talk about Columbus Crew SC, and that is exactly the way they would have wanted it. When you're picking 27th, that means you got something that's way more important than your uh, than the draft order. That means you have a Philip F. Anschutz trophy in the cabinet as the crew do a huge victory for them in MLS cup 2020. Uh, let's instead of focusing on who and what and where they might go with this pick, uh, Doyle, just walk me through the last couple years in crew land and then what 2020 meant and what 2021 can be. I mean, it, it does start. I, I think you have to go all the way back to, to Greg Berhalter being hired and then becoming one of the consistently very good teams in the league. And then just the shock of, the, the potential move to Austin and the way those fans were able to rally and, and save the crew um, and sort of rebuild and, and revitalize the culture. And then the new ownership comes in uh, and Caleb Porter, you, you have to tip your hat to him. He and Tim Bezbachenko were able to keep the, the core pieces of that roster and then upgrade and then get the teams at second ever MLS cup victory. It, it was just a, had to be a wild ride for those fans um, and they sure did look happy in, in December when they were all hoisting that trophy. They got a stadium. They got a hot boy in Kevin Molino. They got <laughs> BWP. They got reinforcements, and they have the 27th pick. It is in. Let's go to Tim Bezpachinko for the selection. With the final pick in the first round of the MLS Super Draft, the Columbus Crew SC select Justin Malou from Clemson. 
Everybody trying to flex with the Philip F. Anjutes in the background. Justin Malou, <laughs> yet another pick out of Clemson. Uh, right back here, which makes sense because they're a little bit uh, a little bit thin there outside of Harrison Offal. Chris Caden moving on to the Scottish Premier League in the offseason. Seems like a, a pick that makes a lot of sense, Doyle. Uh, yeah, though, he, I think he probably projects more as a center back, to be honest oh, with you. He's, you know, he's 5'11", six foot tall, so he's maybe a little bit undersized at center back, but with the way that the crew use their right back, I don't think he fits as a pure overlapper. Like he, he's not making that play that Harrison Awful made uh, in MLS. Maybe you d differ on that, Charlie. Do you see him more as a center back in MLS, or do you think he could be a, an overlapping right back? Well, I think he's going to have to adapt if he wants to be a long-term right back in Major League Soccer. But he definitely has the pace and the athleticism to be a, a right back. But he just has to be cleaner with his deliveries. And I think that's what, when you when you look at Harrison Affle, what he's been able to do for Columbus Crew with putting whipping in balls and, and creating chances as a right back, that's where Justin Malou is going to have to improve. But as a center back, he also fits in well playing next to a Jonathan Mensa. I think he's going to have a mentor in Jonathan Mensa so he could play next to him and he's gonna he's gonna take some time to adjust to the major league soccer level but I, I really like this pick Mike Noonan turning out talent at Clemson University <laughs> let's give a round of applause to the ACC but again uh, this 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 is a this is a talented kid and and I really do believe um, the Columbus crew are just continuing to to add to this this group I mean you can challenge at every position uh, Isaiah Parente is another player who they signed as a homegrown out of Wake Forest, who was arguably one of the best midfielders in in the ACC. Just uh, they continue, they continue to, to to really beef up this team for for this upcoming season. Clemson players in the first round: Philip Mayaka, third overall to the Rapids. You have Kamarni Smith to DC at four, uh, and they have Justin Malou, 27 to Columbus. That is your first round. The second and third will follow. We will not bring those to you. You'll have to follow. At MLSsoccer.com or the MLS app on the draft pack tracker, you can see those picks come through. Congratulations to all 27 players and their families, their coaching staffs, everyone who supports them selected in this first round in 2021. There are more picks to come, 86 total, so you can do the math. There's a lot more names to be called. Let's sum this thing up, starting with these top overall picks. You mentioned earlier, Doyle, you were really thinking about one through three. Danny Pereira took us a little by surprise to Austin. Calvin Harris out of Wake to FC Cincinnati. And then, as I said, Philip Mayaka from Clemson, who was rumored to be the number one overall pick going third to the Rapids. As you digest all of that yet again, what is the conclusion that you come through one through three? Well, I mean, they were the consensus three best talents in the draft. So I, I think that is, you know, best best available talent rules in, in drafting, no matter what sport it is. And that was certainly the case today um, in in MLS, though. Uh, I, I'm surprised it was Pereira first and, and Mayaka third. I th would have thought that would be reversed. I suspect there are a lot of happy people uh, in Colorado, and I know there's a lot of happy people in Austin. You don't spend a number one pick on a guy who you don't plan to give minutes to. The question I would have coming out of this is, do they see Pereira as a number 10 with number eight tendencies or number eight with a number 10 tendencies? And if he's an eight, is there going to be enough defensively to play him and, and Alex Ring together deep in the central midfield and then get a true number 10 ahead of him. I think that is the question that I'm left with after this draft because, again, Pereira, number one pick, he's there to start. He's not right, there to, to hold someone else's water. Excuse me. Let's see all the picks here as we cycle through. Uh, Charlie Doyle nailed the top three there. Outside of the top three, as we look at these uh, first nine, what are you looking at? What is a flag to you? I, I maybe DC up here four and five. Yeah, DC and and DC made some. I, I give a lot of credit to Dave Casper because Kamari Smith and Michael DeShields are two players who can play right away, who can contribute right away. They have the the talent to make an impact, and so uh, that would be very impressive. I think from from Dave Casper to get two guys who can come in and make a difference for DC United. Ten through eighteen. Uh, in all my prep, Nabi Kimbuguchi had a lot of a, a lot of good words said about him. To get him at 18 for the Loons and for them to jump in at 17 as well for Justin McMaster as high high uh, potential, perhaps Doyle after that mm -hmm. injury. Uh, Minnesota yeah, uh, again, we saw that draft from a couple years ago. They're they're seeing some value here. Yeah, well, I mean Minnesota, you know they're 
their academy is taking some time to get up to speed and churn out first teamers, so they kind of have to do some work in the draft. And um, they absolutely deserve the benefit of the doubt, given the types of players they've been able to get in spots like that over the last couple of years. See a lot of ACC in this. That is, as we said, because the ACC was the only league that had their full season. 27 picks down, so many more to go. Stay tuned here. We're going to finish you off with an interview with Matt DeRosa, of course, uh, one of those two twins. Ben's still waiting to have his name called, so we will wait for that one. Uh, as we uh, think about this day and what it means for the rest of the season, certainly you have to put it in perspective, Doyle. So help the people at home who have watched all these 27 picks and are now thinking, okay, what can these guys do? Uh, help them understand what today means and what is still to come for MLS teams because there's a lot of roster building, a lot of signings yeah. uh, that we have not yet seen. The vast majority of these picks are more about 2022 and 2023 than they are about 2021. This is not like the NBA draft where you get guys who, um, for the most part, immediately walk into the roster and you know half of them walk into starting jobs. That's not the way it works in MLS anymore. Um, the expectations – uh, need to be placed on the guys who your team drafted last year and the year before, because that's what we see from uh, the best MLS teams, the ability to take those players and gradually over the course of a couple of years, turn them into high level contributors. Charlie got to see that, you know, firsthand with the revs, with their defense, their entire defense came through the draft. Now, one of them in Henry Kessler walked right in, but the rest of them took a couple of years to develop and that is the thing to remember before you start bagging on your, your team for what you think is a bad draft pick. You won't know that. Until oh, I never said season. bad draft pick, but I was just hoping. No, I wasn't saying you said that. Going. I wasn't oh, okay. saying you said that. I'm saying fans out there have to understand, give these guys some time because the jump from college to MLS is getting bigger and bigger and bigger every year. All right, let's put a bow on one of the coolest stories of the day. We'll see when Ben is drafted. But Matt DeRosa was an interview with Devin Kerr. 25 overall, Toronto FC, the fighting Chris Armises. Who do we select? Matt DeRosa out of University of Maryland. That's right. He traded red for a different red. His brother's still there. Mom and dad are there. The family dynamics are off the charts. <laughs> What's going on in that household right now, guys? We're so excited. Uh, I'm just thankful to Toronto for picking me. Um, it's always been my dream. This is definitely one of the best moments of my life. Ben, be honest. Happy, sad. Uh, wh where's where's the pecking order fall in the family right now? <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. No, I, I couldn't be more excited. Um, it's been both of our dreams since we were like little kids, uh, and hopefully the night's not over yet for my family. But <laughs> I'm, I'm thrilled for him. Uh, I root for him just as much as I root for myself. Let's get mom and dad involved. Mom and dad. You know, some people sit at home and think, I want my child to play sports. You decided that wasn't what was going to happen. We're not going to get one. We're going to get two. They're going to be twins. They're going to go to college. They're going to go to Maryland. National title winners. And now MLS draftee, one to follow. I mean, where did, when did this game plan start? Day one. Day one. They were given a little stuffed soccer ball in their isolate when they were born. Yeah, so. and, and we did a fair amount of brainwashing, too, along the way, you know, <laughs> planting them in front of a TV from age one or whatever it was. <laughs> well, I'm but the first one lined up on Amazon Prime to, uh, to buy the book. Feel free to write it. You've got my subscription. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, congratulations. Matt, first and foremost, congratulations on the draft to Toronto. Ben, I'm sure you're right around the corner. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. It. Yeah, appreciate it's it. very exciting. Well, we're three and a half hours in, and I just got the most important information of the day. Let's see. Brainwashing, plant them in front of the TV, my <laughs> three-year-old and six-month-old. Maybe in 15 years, 20 years, I'll be in that position. Maybe you guys will be interviewing. We shall see. Congratulations to everybody taken in the first round of the MLS Superdraft 2021 presented by Adidas. Thank you to everyone out there watching with us. It was such a special day. Danny Pereira taken first overall. A pair of teammates in Washington, seeing themselves both taken. Calvin Harris going to FC Cincinnati. Philip Mayaka, third to the Colorado Rapids. All the coverage of the 2021 MLS Super Draft at MLSsoccer.com on the MLS app will have grades, and the draft tracker will take you to the second and third round. Thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy your day. <laughs>